You see text appear in the lower left-hand corner of a black screen. It says 2035 CE, Europa Sector. As the blackness fades into a vision of an immense yet incredibly flat plain of white beige with light tan striations etched across it, you begin to hear the crunch, crunch, crunch of footsteps on snowy rock. A cryo geyser erupts <laughs> violently. Your screen transitions to an excavation site. As the scene comes into focus, you see a few people in spacesuits around what seems to be a work site of some sort. As one of the workers pass by the camera, you see the name Red Sea Mining emblazoned on one of the breastplates of the seemingly armored-looking spacesuit. The camera follows the person in the suit, and as it does, a large circle cut directly into the surface of the moon comes into view. Perched across and above the sec a missing section of the crust is a rigging system held aloft by high-tension cables. The work begin, begins to become slightly frenzied, and a sense of anticipation can be felt within the thin oxygen atmosphere. Chatter begins to quiet as a large, angular, obsidian black object is lifted out of the once undisturbed ancient waters. The workers spring into action, moving around with a speed and efficiency of a team that's obviously done their fair share of artifact retrieval. Little did they know the sequence of events that they were about to start, though. The camera detaches from the action amongst the workers and begins to focus in on the object closer. At first, you begin to distinguish lines and shapes etched, nope, formed out of the material. A deepness of black so dark that it seemingly swallows whatever light that touches it. The camera zooms closer and you begin to hear the hum as you see blue, uh, lines of bluish white energy pulse in one direction and then the next. The camera continues zooming in, closer and closer, to the point of being able to see the molecules that make up the edges and the atmosphere around the object. Then you notice the object has that same bluish-white energy field around it, and it's splitting off and consuming atoms one by one. For what? Who knows? Faster and faster, this process of atomic separation happens until the camera snaps back out suddenly and you hear yelling and screaming everywhere. The object is consuming the moon and those around it. A near endless vacuum is just removing the people, the crust, the water, and the very moon itself from existence. It took less than a minute for this object to obliterate what took untold eons to form. As the object hovers in space, a vibration begins deep within the core of the object, beneath that impenetrable surface. Then a burst of white Wide spectrum energy is released from the object. In that burst contained the rocket fuel for launching humankind to the stars or the bomb that would destroy them all. A real life Akashic record suddenly falls from the heavens into the collective hands of the planet. Knowledge from beyond. Generations of information and discovery from dozens of species, all with a single goal in mind. To pass on what they know so that maybe the next one gets it right, as the solution to Fermi's paradox is self-destruction. Within that repeated wide spectrum signal is contained the secrets to Earth's wildest dreams, yet it was only the beginning. Fusion power, quantum computing, nanotech, neural interlaces, atomic manufacturing, and so, so much more. This broadcast became known as the influx event. Though it was only the beginning, as it was only an elementary school primer provided from beyond those collective alien graves. The signal was designed to get a technologically capable enough civilization up to speed, and then they're left to prove themselves. That proof can be provided to themselves by decoding the further data within. That data, known as flux data, is the most valuable thing now. The camera pulls back and back and back, until the object fades from view, blending into the infinite expanse of space. Once again, you see text in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. 2046, Terra Sector. The blackness of space fades, and an object is seen again. This time it's Terra Sector, or Earth. Our species is a home planet. The spheroid begins to fill the whole of the screen. As it does, you can begin to see something as different than the Earth maybe you know. 
The surface has far less light to cross it. There seem to be concentrations of blinding light, though, still. With the camera seemingly on a collision course with the planet, everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger and fills the screen. The camera swoops down through the atmosphere, revealing large stretches of destroyed landscapes. Higher oceans, insane winds, blinding rain, enormous typhoons, a crack of lightning across the sky. The camera settles in on a flyby of the North American continent, or what it used to be. You see what was once Washington, D.C., the hub of global power, laying now before you in ruin. Collapsed building after collapsed building. If you were to look very carefully, you'd see the scorches left on the pavement where people once were before the bomb went off. Separatist rebels nuked China, Russia, and the U.S. simultaneously. No one reacted well, especially the nation states, though their death throes would be over soon enough. The camera keeps moving across the land, with humans evacuated from much of it. It seems that the planet has had time to begin to heal itself. Occasionally, you see what could possibly be a lone house or a hut flash by. With the crossing of the continent behind you, what used to be the Los Angeles Valley begins to come into focus, just ruination lays before you a landscape of shredded buildings what left what little is left seems to have been harvested for scrap the rapid motion of the camera never ceasing begins moving up the western coast and in the distance you can see the night sky begin to lighten in the lower left hand corner new san francisco capital city of the terran arcology consortium as the nsf comes into view you see from above the hills, stretching out towards the skies, magnificent, gleaming, bluish towers constructed from nanoscale manufactured titanium silica comp composite materials. The blue lights traveling much further than the pinks and the reds and the yellows and oranges that are seen up close. Beneath you lay large stretches of protected mill zone land where Varangian forces live, train, and test new weapon systems. Moving ever closer to the NSF, a megacity to end all megacities. Lights of every color and brightness seem to penetrate the camera lens as it wraps around the western coast of the city, taking in all the parks, homes, and transit systems of some of the wealthiest of the wealthy, encapsulated by long stretches of shopping district. The camera whips around the peninsula and heading east now, you can begin to see the industrial area of the city surrounded by the docks. You can see various aerodrones as well as seagoing drones coming and going from the various facilities on the northeastern side. Off to one side, you can see the glistening new convention center with its high-tech bubble construction. Off to the other side of the docks, you can see the Shard, a haven for crime, fights, and gang-related activity located at the now disused sports arena. Seemingly cutting a large wound into the impenetrable exterior of the NSF skyline, various roads, skyways, and transit systems lead into the pulsating heart of the NSF. The camera swoops low to follow the road, hearing the beeps and hums and yells of a lively cityscape as it finds its way past brightly lit advertising hollow signs written in Mandarin and English. Past the towering 25,000-person apartment buildings, past the street kids and gangbangers vying for space on the streets, it pulls into focus on an unassuming building, a rather boring-looking, regular-looking building amongst the likes of giants. The building has no signage, no one coming or going. With a silent motion, the camera slides sideways to the front of the building, getting closer and closer to, uh, to a top-floor window. As if there was no glass to speak of, the camera passes right through the window. Once inside, you can hear the sound of technology and of one person speaking gruffly to someone. I don't give a fuck what he... As the man says what would become his final words, a minor whirring sound is heard and then... Whoom! The camera immediately shifts back outside and above the building. With one large crack, the building begins to crumble. Clouds of vaporized debris rise from that rubble. After what seems like an eternity, but was mere moments, you see a few hesitant people begin to scramble over and into the debris. The camera fades. What happens over the following days, few are privy to, and certainly not someone such as a lowly runner, but the calls won out. Deals have been made. 
So let us start our play session and we'll just work our way around. So, AJ, where do we find Dalton, correct? Yeah. What's Dalton doing, say, approximately 11 a.m. on this uh, fine day we find ourselves? Dalton would definitely, uh, well, uh, is it a weekend? Because on a weekend at 11 a.m., nope. uh, Dalton is definitely chilling at well, home, let's, not let's uh, say it's not a, Let's say it's a Tuesday at 11 a.m. Okay, so then uh, Dalton is driving uh, for various uh, dead drops he sort of receives. He gets, like, a notification. He's got to go to a place. Once he gets there, the person he picks up will tell him where to go next. So he's essentially just in this drive chain of going, picking up, going to another place, picking up. And 11 a.m. is kind of right in the middle of his day. He's going to take lunch soon. Looking forward to lunch, that's always his favorite part of the day where he's made something for himself the night before and basically the only real excitement Dalton gets in his life is what he's decided to make himself the night before and the lunch he has the day after okay uh very boring guy uh for the for the most part uh what's uh um, yeah what's Dalton look like uh like essentially your New York cab driver just a pudgy 45 year old man big thick mustache uh he wears a variety of hats uh mostly those um oh i know what they're called those like the the british like uh folded forward hat there a flat cap like, a flat cap yes flat caps okay so he wears flat caps and he's usually got like a button like a, an undone button up shirt over like some other like very clearly cheap local store shirt and uh all right uh he uh, he he draws, he wears like khaki pants and stuff he doesn't wear jeans he tries to he he's a little more professional than that but it all comes together looking like a mess who's your um who's uh who's dalton's does dalton have a, a regular fixer he works with or does dalton just sort of work with a variety of fixers uh, so he has, uh, he's very low on the scale. So he has one person that he meets an occasion, like one person he's dedicated to who gets him his inside track. What's his and name? And occasionally what's he'll their meet name? fixers in the business. What's their name? Uh, his fixer? Yeah. Uh, Dave. Dave. Okay. Um, as you're sitting there in your car, um, going about your sort of midday chores starting to begin to fantasize Dalton really you know middle age got a bit of a tub on him he's he's looking forward to that next meal right he's he's the kind of guy that sits there and goes oh I think today is you know maybe we'll stop by and get some of that you know that that exotic food on the corner I could smell that from my apartment right he's he's already fantasizing his next his next meal um the uh calm device um, in your car, um, begins to just chirp with, uh, with a phone call. All right. I answers it. Dalton, 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 my favorite runner, my favorite runner. Um, hey. I have, um, I have a job for you. I have a great job for you. I know how you've been looking to move up in the world, and I've got a job for you. It pays, I mean, decently, but it's a foot in the door. It's a foot in the door. This is real work. This is real work. I don't have any details about the real work, but it's real work. I can promise you that. And, um, I, you know, look, all I need is to go, go ahead from you. I can send the deets on to you, and we can go from there. My man. Yeah, send me whatever. Send me whatever you got. I'm. I'll do it. You know me. I'm all. I'm game. I'm game every day. That's what I love to hear. That's what I love to hear. All right, send it over. He fucking clicks off, and you. Uh, you very quickly get a, and you've got a message waiting for you. Um, you've got to be at the Lucky Lou Bar, in uh, over by uh, the industrial section of town, um, in um half an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh. I'm gonna. All right. That's with gonna put up with my lunch. with that, 
the camera cuts, little nice some music starts, and what you what you actually experience is the sort of um, audio experience in movies where you hear the music at a distance, and then the camera focuses on somebody walking down the street. And in go the earbuds, and you hear the fucking beat now. You're with the music. And as we, we're walking down the street, we, we, we sort of, camera comes in behind somebody, and you just sort of see people parting a little bit as this person walks down the sidewalk. Cat, what's Jacob up to about 11 o'clock on a Tuesday? Well, t- Tuesday is re-up day for whatever he needs, whether it be bullets, drugs, or just general, just checking him with context that he's keeping up with right now just getting a little jogging a little sweat because fuck taking the bus don't need to waste 15 bucks when he got the cyber legs that he does so right now he's just scrolling phone trying to figure out like who's going to be the re-up today and right now doing okay on bullets so it's probably going to be narcotics okay all right all right so as you pull out your uh, your calm device and go to like dial your your connect for whatever you're uh, whatever you're looking to pick up. Um, okay. You get a you get an incoming te- uh, um, text message, and it's from one of the various contacts that you have across the city. Um, he basically sends you a message that says, "Shadow deal could be sketchy. You in?" I would reply. You know, what, what's, what's the pay looking like for it? Comes back 2,500 creds. Fuck it, I'm in. You just get back. Lucky Lou Bar. Don't be late. 1130. All right. All right, I'll see you there. Um, f- your, your contact sends back um, a, a, a laughing emoji and says, you know, I ain't going to be there. Um. Uh, camera fades out from Jacob and all of a sudden we find ourselves at a high-end boutique store and as the camera comes in through the front door all you hear is a commotion by the register Aspen what's Karen up to Well, Karen, Karen Thorne, if you will, has just walked herself into one of the best blouse stores in town, but unfortunately has had to deal with some of the worst customer service that she's had to deal with in the last 15 years. And she's letting the person behind the counter know that there is nothing that she can do to fix this situation anymore. She's broken the trust that is set up between the customer and the person who's serving them. Um, as you are making this, this poor retail clerk in a moneyed section of town which means they are even more put upon they are even more at risk because if they piss off who whatever rando walks in the door who fucking knows what hell could fall from the sky on the top of their head so they are desperately trying to just get you to stand down in some capacity as you are destroying this person's day probably week maybe month um your calm device in your pocket just starts vibrating madly. Excuse me just one second. I actually have important things to deal with. You can sit on your ass. As you turn away to take that, that calm device out and you turn back, the retail clerk is already gone. Just gone. Just... I, just probably under the counter crying but we don't know for sure like just gone as soon as they saw the opportunity um do you work with a regular fixer do you have a variety of contacts that send you jobs across um from across the you know sort of the net and the world as it were uh yes i have particular people who contact me and occasionally we'll meet up who's the who's the sketchiest fixer you got 
Uh, uh, he, he goes by the name of Dick Dangler. Okay. <laughs> of course. I love you, you, you pull out your uh, comm device, <laughs> you turn away, you turn back, clerk's gone, but all you hear is, hey there, Karen. It's Dick Dangler here. I've got a job for you. You, you interested, babe? I'm always interested. Mm. You always know exactly how much I'm interested. Well, I hope you're interested in about 2,500 creds worth of interest. Mm. How much of my time? About an hour, maybe two. For sure. All right, that's what I like to hear. <sighs> Go to the Lucky Lou bar. Half an hour. 11.30, don't be late. <laughs> Click. Creep. Camera, f- camera fades, but the last thing you see is the camera is pulling out of the shop is you see the retail clerk literally running down the sidewalk the other direction from the store. Just sprinting. Just sprinting. <clears throat> As the camera... How is Karen not got a plus four and provoke? <laughs> <laughs> um, As the camera sort of becomes aware that you, you start to hear things before you see things. And what you hear is gears and whizzes and beeps and bloops and hums and ticks of various mechanical and technological. You hear the of metal across metal surfaces as the camera starts to come up from black. Where do we see, what do we see, Karina? Um, there, you see a humanoid who is barely recognizable as a born human. Parts of their body have been replaced haphazardly, with some seem to be parts from drones, others seem to be, like, once top-of-the-line military tech, but now long overdue. You see what you can only describe as a modern-day Frankenstein. As she hobbles across the room, she's... You see her actually bouncing to a bit of music. Now, you would only hear a muffled hum coming from inside her head, but she's simply bobbing to her own thing. As she's deep inside a drone, its parts are completely splayed open as she is fitting new parts as you speak, like as we all see. No, this... This has got. This will get get in there when I. T- there we go. Plug, plug in. As you're as you're struggling, or as you're working with this drone and working d- deep in this object, um, what we see from the mirror side, even though we can't quite see, uh, we can't see the device that displays it. We see the augmented reality pop up and. Ping. One new message. Now that's peculiar. Um, she runs it on an internal HUD. It's a message from your longtime um, fix, uh, your fixer, who you've been trying to, uh, who you know and has been helpful, getting you some gear for your drones, and has been, you know, kicked you a lot of like uh, repair and patchwork to, you know, keep the project going, as it were. Um, but this time, the message says, um, Crit, baby, darling, it's your time to shine. I got a real gig for you. You in? Uh, what's the p- p- pay like? Twenty. Uh, what comes back is 2,500 credits. But maybe, uh, but maybe a reputation. 
She looks at her pile of scrap that, like, the camera, as it pans back, you kind of just realize she is a trove of shit in this tiny garage that she works with. 25, that. Uh, you know. With that fit. Okay. That could get me a new arm. Can we count me in? Okay. Um, with that, we see the, the, the agreement go out. We see a message ding back. Move your ass or whatever you have. You got a half an hour to get to Lucky Lou Bar. Sounds good. She just picks up the drone and clicks it onto her head, looking like a hat now, as it like the drone itself converts into this more stealth mode. And it covers what the camera had mostly up until now avoided was a very non-human face. Camera fades out. On that face. As the camera comes up. And watch this. As the camera comes up. We see. A lithe figure. An iridescent. And almost. Pearlescent figure. Crouching in an alleyway. How's Troy doing, Caboose? Can I actually start off on something? Yeah, go for it. Feel free to retcon anything okay, I just so said. Okay, we so don't, we don't start on Troy just yet. Instead, we start on this, um, this really loud, vibrant commercial, seeing the same iridescent, pearlescent man. Um, and you hear this, you know, this playful, sultry female voice saying things like, He's whatever you want to be. He's the man you need in your life. And you see images of, like, a large, hunky, pearlescent man flexing his muscles and stuff. And then you see an image of, like, this, you know, bashful little tweet kind of looking away from the camera. And you see another, like, you know, text and some stuff. And the voice says, customizable. And you actually, the commercial actually does show a rather detailed image of his penis that grows in length a bit with a slide whistle sound. (laughs) And then the commercial, and then after another series of images of other configurations and things, um, the commercial just shows the default form, which is his rather tall, slightly muscular form, and says, Troy. Model 3 series now available. And then we zoom back out and of a screen over a, a, an alleyway. And we see Troy, the same model of robot that was in the commercial, huddled down, crouching over some a pile of some kind of technology, of some junk, of spare parts and stuff, and going through it. And you see a rather large hole in the back of his head with bits of circuitry, some actuators, various gears, or whatever, just robotic stuff. Pieces. Pieces. At the back of his head. And he is just emotionlessly going through various pieces that look like they might fit there. They don't. And so he continues just going through piece by piece, finding something that he could use to repair himself with. As you're um, going through this like pile of rubbish and dumpster and whatever else, um, Troy encounters a discarded body. And as you begin to push the body to the side, because that has no usable pieces for you, of course, that's, you know, that's still trash. You notice that there's a ringing coming from the pocket of the dead person. Troy stares at the source of the ringing for just a moment, kind of processing, all right, that's a phone in his head and stuff, mm-hmm. or a communication device. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what is the, okay. Um, this is a, like a person, right? This isn't a, another robot. This it is, is correct. Okay, so this is, I, 
Troy, Troy found a dead body. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, kids, want to see a dead body? <laughs> I'll get my he, poking stick. He takes the device out of his hands and answers it and just kind of awkwardly and confused, you know, kind of confused, holds it up to his hand and goes, Hello. Job. Lucky Lou. 30 minutes. Don't be late. Disconnect. Job. Lucky Lou. 30 minutes. Don't be late. Phones. It Comms already disconnected. All right. Troy has no idea where the Lucky Lou is. I just imagine this person thought they hired, like, one of the world's greatest assassins who just got their <laughs> shit rocked after a bar fight and Troy found the phone. God fucking as, damn. As, ki- as Troy... As we leave Troy, quizzically looking at the comm device, sort of pondering what he may or may not have agreed to, the camera fades Mm -hmm. out. And the camera fades up. What we see is a scene of commotion, of chaos, as a... Uh, as a um, a local store, uh, an arms store, is being robbed. Robbing a gun store in NSF is a bit of an activity. It's a bit of an undertaking. And any team that thinks they're going to rob a, gu- uh, a gun store in the NSF probably would benefit from um, a few correct people in their team. And what we see is three people come out of the store, one of whom is gushing blood. And as the three people are shoved into the car by the third person behind them, the camera turns a little bit and you can see the other three bodies that were left in the store. And the camera turns back and climbs into the car with them. Wordy. We find you in. Uh, we find uh, we find Patty in the back seat of an arms robbery, not gone well. Um, as we attempt to get away, how's Patty doing? Angus, when was the last time I told you, don't pull the trigger unless you plan on getting shot? And my hands are like, I'm wrist deep in his guts at the moment, as like I'm trying to like put it all back together because there's like three different bullets in there and I'm like digging it out as he's like yelling like shut the fuck up um as you're yelling shut the fuck up your comm device starts ringing <laughs> ah, and I hit the side of it and I'm like uh Patty here if you call me up Chuck I'll fucking kill you <laughs> oh Patty you know I'd never call you up I mean Patty I'd never call you that name it's your, fav- it's your favorite fixer, Tex here. Tex, all right. Uh, what you got for me? Ah, oh, man, I just, you know, I mean, you know how it is, Patty. You're always in demand. Tex, These- I got five minutes. I'm running from the cops right now. I've got my hands inside of someone's guts. Cut the bullshit. Nah, no, nah, I, under- I understand. I understand, Patty. It's like that one time back, um, back when I was still a runner. Yeah, it's, you know, we had hit this one liquor store, and man, did it go wrong. Me and my boys, we ended up, <laughs> we ended up having, to ch- uh, having to be chased by those goddamn federales all the way south of the border. We ended it up in South America. Right? You know what South America looked like when the nation states were... Co- uh, 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 oh, sorry, sorry. You said keep it short. Keep it short. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry, Patty. You know how I, I get. Shut up for a minute. Sorry, sorry, Tex. I'm trying to keep a guy alive. I just, you know, it's well. I'm probably gonna need you to keep some more guys alive. It's. Uh, I don't okay. know exactly what's going down, but I don't, we I got don't something. Care what's sca- happening. Just tell me what to do. Okay? Oh well. Um, you gonna be busy in about a half an hour. <laughs> Uh, well, let me wash my hands, and I'll be there in 15. All right. Lucky Lou Bar. All right. Cool. They got coffee patches, right? Yeah, you know, maybe. Click. All right. Cool. And I managed to put him back together and, like, give him a sedative to, like, get him to, like, stop crying for five minutes. I'm like, look, bud, you're going to be all right. Drink a bottle. Sleep it off. You'll be walking the next day, okay? All right. How far away? All right. Cool. All right. Now. We're going to fade to black from that. Now, you all have 30 minutes, technically, to um, 
one, get to the bar, and then two, do anything that you want to do while on the way to the bar. So, we'll go around the table and we'll see what people can or can't accomplish in that half an hour. Some of you may be across town in the instance of Karen and probably will just be taking some high-speed transit. Um, but calls can be made, net dives can happen, things can be explored, legwork can be done in that amount of time if you're precious about what you do. So, Dalton, I figure we're driving to, uh, yeah. to the Lucky Lou, given all things considered. Um, what's that I'll drive? Put, okay. Yeah, what's that drive I, look I, like? Well, for sure, for sure, Dalton is stopping for, a, for like a cheese sandwich on the way. I, 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 mm. I can't do it. He's got he's to eat something. It's been too long. Oh, yeah. You, you definitely, um, the cam like as the camera turns, like it looks down at like what Dalton is eating. You for sure see um, real brand cheese. Right. <laughs> so, you know, just just another one of those dystopian cyberpunk food products. Yeah. Um, so, OK, uh, Dalton's going to stop and grab a cheese sandwich on his way. Fair enough. Got it. Got to take care of the basics. Uh, Jacob is sprinting um, from uh, from where. Uh, well, Jacob probably would have been in the, the sort of sketchier part of town. So. Uh, yeah, moderate modestly yeah I, I'm modestly grab closer. A better notebook okay so yeah jacob definitely would be closer to where the lucky lou is so got any got Wait. any homeboys you want to call got any shit you want to do pretty much just the opposite just you know start you know as as as, as all good uh i guess shooters would 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 do it's just like look <clears throat> just let everybody know. It's just like, look, I'm gonna be busy tonight. Just you know, don't call me. Don't ask where I'm at. Don't fucking you know. Don't don't. If you can, if anything could be traced back to me, just just cut it the fuck out for tonight. And just you know, just that sort of just you know, leave yep. me the fuck alone. I'm going dark. Shut off. the fuck up. Yeah, pretty much. After that, just you know, as he's running, as he's done many times before, just digs into the bag, grabs himself a little grinder, a little baggie. And just says, you know, as he's sprinting over, he just grinds up a good three joints, pretty well packed, takes note of the lighter and just like, okay, these are just going to be here for good keeping. One of them, just a little puff puff. Actual, actual cannabis. Yes. Mm, that means it's hydro grown in the city. Yes. That's some primo shit. Okay. Duly noted. Jacob be puffing on some, uh, on some reefer on the way. Um, yep. okay. Um, Karen. <clears throat> you, I'm assuming there's uh, established high-speed transit. Uh, there's high-speed transit. There's cars that you could call. I mean, Karen is a grifter for sure. So, like, there are multiple routes. There's air, uh, aero taxis. There's some high-end, like, transit on the ground, like some, you know, um, hired chauffeur stuff. There's high-speed, tra uh, public high-speed transit that leads from the, the wealthy district, uh, to, from the district, um, into the other parts of town. Yeah, there's a variety of ways that Karen could get there. Um, yeah, Karen immediately walks out the store, looking onto her device, her phone, to figure out where the hell this lucky whatever the fuck is at. Finding out that it's across town, she walks up the street and hops onto the public transit that's on the, you know, walks up to the booth for the public transit, and that's on the high speed. Uh, is there a clerk that I can fuck with along the way? Um, not really. It's largely automated. Um, the entire system is sort of automated to a certain degree. Hold on. Let me help you out here, though. Um, I will put this in your guys' shared... So you can get a sort of vision of what's going on here. That's your train station. That's cool. Um, so that's from the wealthy district over to um, the slums, which are far. <laughs> their train station is far, far 
more, um, shall we say, humble, uh, as it were. Um, Is there a station in the dock area? Uh, there are, um, in fact, here, hang on. Um, where is, do I not have, there we go. Uh, yes, here you go. Here's the train station that lead, uh, that is often used by the workers for the dock and associated industrial area. So underground, dingy, oppressive, hot, it smells, there's, there's rodents and cockroaches and all sorts of stuff as opposed to the, uh, you know, the upper crust one, which is just sky high and gleaming and glass and tubular and has greenery attached to it and overlooks the bay. Um, yes, very much so. So, okay, Karen catches the train. Is there anything? I mean, you've got a, you got a, uh, basically a train ride. Um, do you want to do anything while you're on the train? Uh, check my only scams account to see if I have any uh, buddy who has any messages for me or anything scams. like that. Um, Sorry, only stands, only stands. Okay, I was going to say, I was going to say, if you were going to change that on the fly, I had a, a direction to go. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, if you... Um... Only scams is, scams is what I call it. Okay, so um, as you go to check your only stands account, um, you notice, uh, you ding, um, and you get a payday. Um, that's your, you, you know, it's that time of the month. You get your payday, and in comes 7,800 credits. And immediately you hear ding, and that 7,800 credits gets transferred right out of the account for de uh, debt balance due. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Camera cuts, uh, cuts over to crit. What are you doing, Karina? So it's pronounced krill. Yeah. Well, why don't you use like ones then? Because there is a one. Well, but the, the, the sevens look like T's. Okay, krill. Uh, I, I was also told lead, lead speak sevens can be used as L's ever since the beginning of. Either way. Okay, so it's krill. I figured you were playing a tabletop game. Crit made sense. Crit uh, does also make sense. Um, okay, so um, what, is, what is krill doing? Uh, at this point, there's one major question. So she's in the docks, which is right next to the industrial area, right? Yep. Because I, I am looking at a map of San Fran right now. Mm -hmm. um, what's the length of time it would take a normal person to walk there? Hmm. I'll say about 8 to 12 minutes. Fuck, she has to take a train. <laughs> she can't run. What's the, <laughs> what's the range on her drones? Do they have commu two-way communication? Oh, they could. she could get there before with just her drones, yeah, but if she wanted to be there in person. Oh, okay. I mean, that's up to you. There's not going to be a train. Yeah. There's not going to be a train from where you are over to where they are, though. You're probably going to have to use some form of, like, taxi or hired, uh, hired conveyance to get there. Thinking about this now, she just kind of, like, rolls her eyes and goes, Yep, thought this so. She kind of looks at her pile of scrap and just grabs some, just like a handful of high quality chips to like mm -hmm. put away and like, okay, I can swap these if I need be later. Um, and then, yeah, she just, she sends one drone out ahead to make sure that there's nothing going on that will cause her to have to, like thinking about her task, like, hey, if there's a shootout, there's no point of walking into a shootout. Fair enough. Um, and she goes and looks... Okay, actually, here's my question. Um, are there rickshaws? Sure. She goes... I don't know, first thing she does is look for, like, a cyber-enhanced rickshaw. And she should be like, I it's, need a lift. As it pulls up, it's literally just um, a waist and legs attached to a couple of bars uh, and then to, <laughs> to the actual rickshaw cap. Okay, actually using her drone that's on her, she quickly scans for cops. Give me a roll. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. First, First roll. 
Just standard four? Just give me a roll. Oof. No cops. That you see. Yeah, that she sees. She still just takes a second and, like, just take it. Her right hand, which is missing the lower digits, which just has, like, line plugs. She just, without, like, l- trying to not make a scene, just leans on the legs, plugging into one of their open circuits, and it's like, no charge. <laughs> Give me a roll. Oh, come on! Oh, that's not as bad. That's not as bad. Sorry, I keep reading the wrong number. Uh... I don't know how to interpret the numbers. Plus one. Okay, so basically we'll do a quick lesson. Okay, so you look at the roll. Uh-huh. Um, Karina got a plus one. And you see, ignore the average. That's the latter designation. Um, Karina got a plus one. So Karina got a one. And Karina has a hack of one, so Karina got a two, and oh, sorry, tied the sh- uh, tied the shift that she needed to meet. So that's fine, no charge. You you see you you very quickly on your head uh, heads up, just penetrate the fuck. It's a basic rickshaw. It's just designed to like. It's basically a vending machine with wheels. Um, Your tech likes me better than you. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you had to, if you had to invoke, like, if you hadn't ro- if you had rolled really poorly, what you do then is invoke uh, your your tech like uh, likes me more. Spend a fate point and okay. boost it by two, and then you'd be in. Just. <laughs> All right. So she gets she gets into the rickshaw, takes her hat drone off as it unfurls into a crab, and she just kind of pets it while they go on their ride. Okay. Uh, so, what's Patty up to? Alright, so, we're going, and now that I Angus is no longer actively bleeding, I'm able to, like, calm him down, you know, like, get him to relax, and eventually we, I'm like, now that I'm no longer in, we're driving the fuck out of Dodge mode, I get him, I make sure his buddies get him, but I make sure they may drop me off, I'm, like, switching coats, and I'm, like, pulling off my jacket, and I'm just... No fat, it's just all, like, lean muscle, and I'm like, all right. All right, well, you know where to find me if you need anything. Um, take care. Uh, make sure he gets his sedatives every day, and make sure he's drinking enough water, because he needs to get that blood back, and if you're going to go in the next Angus, two weeks. Angus is actively drinking a bottle of liquor. <laughs> Angus? <laughs> Bud? What did I say? He downs it. All right, I pull out two bottles of water. Make sure you drink that too, then. He's already unconscious. Then, all right, make sure he drinks that. And then I uh, uncork my monster and just down it all and then slip on two coffee patches. And then I hop out and then I, like, wash out the blood out of, like, my short side hair. And then, all right, and then I slip in the back of Lucky Lose to avoid any police at the moment. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you were relatively close. You were already midtown. You already were in a vehicle. You got dropped off. Is there anything you want to do in the meantime? More than anything, um, I just want to <laughs> keep an eye for the next, like, weird group of people coming in. And if anybody's showing any real issues, I'm going to try to break those up and keep it quiet. I don't want any issues happening when I'm trying to start a job. So... As you get out of the car and approach Lucky Lou's, you've got a fairly standard uh, industrial section local bar. Um, it's tucked back in under, I mean, the the NSF mega city sort of like infrastructure is very oppressive. As you look up, there's constantly things crisscrossing above you and there's just this seemingly endless wall of buildings and the sky just absolutely is obliterated by this. And so it's very, very claustrophobic. And Lucky Lou is sort of set back down one of these alleyways and sort of a dingy, always wet, always neon portion of the industrial section of town. And, you know, the car can easily get through that section. But, you know, as you walk in through the door, the, the door just absolutely 
creaks as you open it like just a a a hinge that hasn't been greased or de-rusted ever just ever and just so everybody in the bar hears this door open as you slip in the back quietly so i walk in my six foot foot self trans foam like muscle bodybuilding kind of level and I just like give them all like, like a good stare from like the blue and red eye, because I got like one blue, one red, and I'm just like looking around, and I just keep going. Give me your, give me a quick roll. Just give me a flat roll. Okay. Uh, plus one. Cool. Um, as you walk in, um, the bartender, the uh, the owner, proprietor an operator of this fine establishment that you find yourself in um, is standing behind the bar doing what every single bartender in the history of bartending does, cleaning glasses and wiping the bar, just keeping an eye on the establishment. There's really not that many people in the bar at this time of day, uh, this day of the week, but there are three patrons in the bar with the, the with the owner operator of said establishment. Um, they seem to be just the sort of drunken sort that are trying to while their their miseries and woes away at a bar in the industrial section of town at eleven a.m., eleven fifteen ish, right? Cool. I, I have a club somewhere humans live. Yeah, true. I sidle up to the bar. I'm like, give me two uh, energies or whatever you got here. Cool. Um, bartender comes over, uh, looks at you, up and down a little bit, sort of gives you a fair assessment, and uh, pulls uh, pulls a shot glass out from under the bar, pulls another shot glass out from under the bar, pours one of them with a, uh, a, a stimulant drink, you know, a little energy drink for you. Um, and the other one, while looking right at you, just pulls out a bottle of just pure white distilled liquor and just pours it in the second one and just sort of puts that under the counter and says, you look like you probably could use a little bit of a steadying hand. Yeah. You're not wrong. What's your name? And I just hold them both up at the same time, and I down them at the same time. Avery. Avery. All right. Well, Patty. Nice to meet you, Avery. Nice. It's my joint. Yeah. I got a, apparently a couple people coming around here soon, so, you know. All right. Well, you know, I'm yeah. fine with more money, more creds. Yeah. That's fine with me. Just, you know, don't destroy the yeah. joint. We're off to shoot you. Well, if someone destroys the joint, I'll be the first to beat them up. Fair enough. Uh, Avery just turns away from you. Just keeps working the bar, getting things done, cut, cutting, a, uh, cutting a lemon for no drink. No one has ordered a drink with a wedge of lemon in this establishment, in the history of this establishment, but Avery's sitting there cutting lemon wedges. Um, so... As the camera finds itself once again, um, Troy has about a half an hour to find this location. What's Troy up to? Um, well, the first thing he does is just randomly go off in a direction. He has no idea where the hell this uh, looky-loo is. Give me a roll. And he most, huh? Give me a roll. <laughs> oh, just, just straight roll? Yeah, just give me a straight roll. Let's see if your navigation sensors weren't torn out of the hole that's in the back of your head. Wow. Congratulations. The, um, the direction, the random direction that uh, Troy picked, he looks up and he's in front of Lucky Lou's bar. Troy doesn't question that. <laughs> Adding dumb luck to my notes on Troy right now. <laughs> Um, he still has the communication device in his hand. Okay. He has not put it away or gotten rid of it or anything. Okay. Um, partially because he doesn't actually have a pocket to put it in. He is wearing a speedo. Ah. Okay. <laughs> he's like he's literally just, wearing just almost nothing. Just a speedo. How inhuman is his skin again? 
it's pretty inhuman. It's lilac colored with this pearlescent, iridescent, like, complexion to it. Just I'm not quite go. sure what the proper term is. It's just, not like just he imagine, has iridescent just, skin. Yeah, just imagine. So a department store mannequin is going around fucking thirst trapping in the street. <laughs> Somewhat. He's... Troy right now is not displaying anything. He's actually a bit rigid. He's walking... Well, he's walking like Data does from Star Trek. I love it. Okay. He's actually... His, his gaze is... He's, he's kind of uncanny right now. His gaze is forward. He's not... Like, he's just looking where he's going. Yep. He's not he just, putting anything. Wherever he not... looks, he's looking that way. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So his optics aren't even fully aligned right now. His optics work. It's just he's not he's not A- listening. Anyway. Attention going... and focus are just sort of. Yeah, he's just, he's got his robotic focus going right now. Oh. Okay. okay, well, Troy, through sheer brilliance genius dumb luck the fates themselves who knows who shall determine um has found himself um directly in front of lucky Lou's bar troy just decide he walks in he just as you know just walks in plainly without like acknowledging anyone around him okay so i hope there's no cover as you walk in Avery, behind the bar, who you've yet to meet, immediately yells, Hey! No hat, no service! Uh, Troy doesn't acknowledge him at first. Takes a minute to realize that he might, that the bartender might be... Avery is actively walking up to you and puts a uh, a fucking um, beanie on Troy's head. (laughs) He goes, there, can't have you walking around the streets naked like that. Jesus. Uh, Troy does not resist, but he does look a little cautious as, uh, cool. as uh, Avery. Yeah, Avery walks up to him. Okay, yeah, uh, Avery, Avery just walks up and puts a beanie on Troy's head and just literally says, yeah, there, can't have you walking around naked. Turns around, walks back to the bar, looks at you again, and says, what can I get you? I don't know. What can you get me? Ah, it's like that. All right. Um, well, for our, um, for our, our, our customer who doesn't quite know what they want, I will make you the house special. What's Troy do? I, um, he thinks for a moment and says, okay, I will have the house special. Okay. Um, do you like just are you still standing where you were standing or have you moved at all? Uh he's walking up to where to the bar now where uh I keep forgetting Avery is. Yep. Um, Man, I can't That's okay. That's okay. It takes time. It takes time. Even I don't have all of my fucking things. Um okay. So as you uh walk up to the bar, Avery sort of like does a little side glance a little bit of a grin to himself, and he pulls out a test tube. It's a test tube. It's a test tube in a holder. And he just takes out this dropper, and he... Three drops. He puts that behind the, back under the bar while sort of... Okay, gets that back under the bar, and in, then you see him take out a bottle and on the side it literally says high viscosity motor oil (sighs) and he just tops off the test tube with the motor oil and then puts the motor oil down and slides the test tube across the bar to you uh troy is meticulously watching every single action that avery does Mm -hmm. with like intense almost inhuman focus his eyes Lock give, on and track. Give me a little... give me a roll. Oh, give me a roll. Okay. He's gonna understand how to make this drink perfectly and understand it's not meant for humans. Uh, you got a negative one. Look, bud. And uh, let me see. Hold on. You are there. We go. Um. Okay. 
Um, as far as you can tell, it's motor oil and something. Well, it's not exactly gonna hurt Troy, so. Uh. Troy? If it kills you, I'll bring you back, and I shock my fingers a little bit. Oh, it, it, oh, that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, Troy. If your medical skill doesn't work, my mechanic will. Troy picks up the test tube and just kind of examines it, and he does that weird little like head tilt all the semi sentient robots and media does, just like. And then he just drinks it. It doesn't immediately fall out of the test tube because of the viscosity of the motor oil. Um, but whatever he dropped at the bottom does have a higher uh, gravity to it, so it slides past the motor oil and then causes an air bubble to rush up and boom, down. Um, give me a roll. Mediocre. Is this a defense roll? You feel something that you've never felt before. It's as if your circuits are buzzing. It's, it's as if you've, you've suddenly, you've, you feel almost, almost, there's something just beyond the periphery. There's something that you're just almost aware of, but you can't quite grasp it. It's, it. You can't quite form as an idea in your mind. Um, give me one more roll. You're pretty sure that having consumed this now, you can do a basic chemical analysis of what has sort of you've experienced. You're pretty sure that whatever was in this concoction has some level of um, neuro uh, neurocognitive performance booster quality to it. Something about this is designed to work with cybernetics and biological and is designed to enhance, is designed to increase performance. And while you don't have the biological, you do have the cybernetic. You have the machine parts that are necessary that would be part of a person who would normally take whatever this substance is. So, yes, you definitely feel like your circuits are tingling and maybe, maybe just maybe. So, Wordy. Patty, on the other hand, has seen this dropper a thousand times. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is C-slash. This is a Netrunner-specific drug. This is a drug that Netrunners use to boost their neurocognitive performance when they do a deep dive and they need to do some real hacking. The come down for a biologic is rough. But we don't know what the come down for just a straight machine might be. Usually, straight machines don't consume C slash, as it is a net runner performance booster. Yeah, I'm just keeping my eyes on this robot just the entire time to see what happens. Fair enough. Um, tell you what, give me a roll. All right. Okay. 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 Um, and then uh, Caboose, give me a roll. Uh, you, Troy is absolutely unable to keep this high to himself. He is buzzing, and the eyes are starting to move a little bit wildly. You see the little bit of a, a little bit of a tremor. Anything that happens with Troy, as far as this drug is concerned, sitting at this bar, you are fully attuned to. Hey, Avery, you got a Rubik's cube? Avery's looking around the bar. Hey, Roy. One of the bar, uh, one of the patrons sitting at the table. Two guys. When it looks over his shoulder. The fuck did you do with that old toy? Yeah. I'm like, you know. 
the, the thing, the thing, the cube. Why the fuck is it in your jacket pocket? It's, give it here. Give it here. And Roy fuck, and just takes out the, the Rubik's Cube of a toy from a bygone era and just hucks it at fucking Avery. Avery. Avery just snatches that shit right out of the air, giving you a little bit of a, a, a peek behind the curtains. Just, just whack. And he just casually just hands it to you, Patty. All right. Hey, uh, hey, robot man, what's your name? Uh, Troy sort of snaps out of his little daze for a moment and slow, gently puts the... Mm, let's get a roll on that, actually. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, and he's just rolling right now. That's fair. <laughs> go, 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 you're having, you're struggling. But yeah, you, you, you have just enough to, hmm? <laughs> So Troy, instead of snapping, he 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 puts the um he kind of awkwardly, shakily puts the test tube back down and says, "What a what a very curious sensation," and then turns over to Patty and says, "Hello, yes, how can I help you? You ever solve one of these?" And I twist it a couple times and hold it up to. What is that? Rubik's cubes. Uh, old shit. That does not look like fecal matter. Can you put all the colors on the same size? Uh, Troy just takes the Rubik's Cube from your hand and examines it a bit and starts twisting, uh, twisting all the sides and stuff around with inhuman speed. Okay. Is he going to solve it? He is attempting to solve it, yes. Go ahead and roll. Should I roll yeah. for something? Go ahead and roll. Any modifiers or just playing? Just a lot of the time, I won't ask you even for modifiers. The truth of the You're matter... You'll add it if you know. Yeah, the truth of the matter is, is that I'll, I'll, you know, I can just GM that behind the scenes, so there's no real even need for you guys to do math. I was doing a little D&D for us. I am the game engine. Go I got a mediocre. Okay. Um, you know what? A task that you normally... Hang on. Let me just double check here. I'm envisioning that he just breaks the Rubik's Cube after... Well, yeah. not at that, but a task that normally would be simplistic, right? This is algorithmic. There's literally a, an algorithm to just solve this. You feel like you're processing the information that you're looking at and the kinesthetic information coming back from your hands and your digits faster than you've ever processed before. But in that processing, you're having trouble keeping up. The actual movements and motions and actions and judgments that you're, you should be doing are falling behind the steps of analysis and information that's coming in from your system. So when you say, turn right three clicks, that was five, to five turns ago that you should have done that. So your cognitive processes are lagging behind what your actual data processing is doing. So you're trying to solve it, but it looks like it's still just randomized colors. After a few, after a little while, Troy just hands the uh, the cube back to Patty and says, "I'm sorry, but the device is temperamental." Temperamental, huh? All right. And I take like five minutes trying to figure out the thing I learned a long time ago and eventually set it down. Roll it. You know what? It is temperamental. Yeah, I agree. Fuck this thing. Here you go, Avery. Yep. Does it does it have a special spot on like Avery's mantle somewhere that it should have been <laughs> that his one of his regulars just tried to walk off with today? Yes. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um after you set after you set the Rubik's Cube down on the bar, um, Avery picks it up, looks at both of you, 
just a little bit longer than you know a bartender typically looks at a customer. And then just sort of as turning without taking his gaze off the two of you solves the Rubik's cube and just places it back on the shelf. And Avery then... knows the repeating three steps. <laughs> um, okay. So we've got two people at the bar already. Um, order of operations. Probably Jacob would arrive next, given the fast feet sort of thing going on there, the full-on sprint, though the the weed could have an impact. In fact, what I'm going to have you do, Cat, is roll. All right, so it's slash roll, right? Correct. Okay. Can we just... All right, well... Um... You're in the industrial part of town. You know that. Right. So what maybe, like? maybe, maybe one joint too many. Should I roll for that? See what type of intoxication we're working with. Oh, you, you just did that. Oh, shit. Okay, so. I'm trying to think. Well. Uh, Maybe a wrong turn here or there. You know, every, when, once once the sprinting just starts, eyes haven't been cybernetically enhanced. So, you know, the eyes can be a little... It can be a little tough while sober to begin with. So just now at this point, it's like the anxiety is starting to set in. As, as, as he just starts looking around, just trying to figure out where exactly he is. Eventually, he caves and just starts slowing down to more of a regular jog to, for the average human. Just starts looking around on the comms, just uh, on the comm machine, just trying to figure out where the where the hell he is. I'm Do, assuming there's a GPS now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now that he's uh, he's taking his time, you're you're around the corner. You're not that exactly. far from it. You're just wandering around, stoned and lost. That's all. Right. So now. So rounding the corner. All right. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Um. As you as you get there, yeah. You can you you know you come around front. You can see the lucky Lou, and you, on your comms device, you're just like, <laughs> fuck me. Uh, <laughs> you just go, I'm just gonna forget about that. I wasn't. I, I, right, I, right. I wasn't. I wasn't lost a b- half a block away from my destination. I swear. Just, uh, just mental note: don't hit the don't hit a joint before these types of jobs. That hard. Exactly. It was too- Blocks away, I went for a four-mile run. <laughs> um, uh, um, okay, then um, you you arrive to the, uh, you arrive out front of the bar. What do you do? You know, just just take a few seconds. Just you know, just 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 breathe it out. Just let's let's just relax and just get in a little happy place. And just you know, of course start you know doing the pat down it's like all right do i got my stuff i got my calm device here i got the two i got the two silenced smgs on the, on the hip they're all you know they're nice and put away all right and then eventually just start you know just a little, little check around the sh- check around the shoulder see what's going on in the area and then eventually give me uh just... give me a roll all right I shouldn't have hit this pen. I'm in the exact same spot. <laughs> God, fuck you're in the it. same spot as. <laughs> yes. Little kid, um, little kid comes running up to you and says, "Mister, Mister, Mister, do you want to buy some candy?" I just, just kind of, you know, little, little jump back, just like, "Oh shit, there actually is somebody here." <laughs> okay, well. Well, what type of candy are we talking about, little man? Um, a hundred percent. These are chiclets. chiclets. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck chiclets are. <laughs> you know what chiclets are? H- have no, you ever I... heard of the drug chiclets? No, I haven't. Fuck. Then assume from there. <laughs> well, Caboose. Shit. Your your Wikipedia search is going to say chiclets. I I you know what. Realizing that I'm just not in the mental place to just fucking be spending this money, I just go, you know what? I think I'm good, little kid. Don't worry about it. And then just, just oh, again, little shifty eyes around before just like 
like, hey, look, I'll just transfer you some credits. Don't worry about it, dog. Just. Thank you, just, mister. You know, Kid it. runs off. Yeah. Right. Just like, fuck it. Before, after that, just like, all right, let's get the, let's just get this fucking night over with. Just boom, right into the bar. No hesitation. Not necessarily like barging in, but just. As you, just, as you, uh, as you walk through the the door to the bar into the Lucky Lou, you hear uh, laughter and all, the only last word you hear is sucker. <laughs> right. Um, right. you walk into the bar, you see two patrons sitting at a table. Um, you see one guy half passed out at another table over in the corner. He's just, uh, <laughs> ah, you know, having conversations with himself at that point. And there is, uh, a totally fucking decked out. Like this is, you, you know, this gear, like, you know, this gear, former, former banger for the nils, dude, there's a, there's like a med tech officer sitting at the fucking bar or something like what the fuck. And then next to the med tech officer is this fucking skinny boy toy robot in a speedo and a beanie. Absolutely fucking tripping balls. Oh, and a bartender oh, yeah. behind the bar, sort of still just continuing about the bartender's business. You know, consider, bartender. considering the days that we live in, this isn't... While it's strange, it's not exactly the worst that Jacob has seen just hanging around the block. Obviously, a little whimsical given the fact that he's still stoned, but he just says, you know what, just fuck it, look forward... Just just leave these people to their business and just head to the bar. Fair enough. Avery sees you approaching the bar. Uh, he just gives you the, you know, what's up? Gotta get you. Yeah. You know what? I'd... Just give me a water and like a, and just cheapest beer you got. Just fuck it. You know how it is. He, uh, you try he... that special? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun... No. No. We're not doing that. How does Jacob uh, react to this stranger in med tech gear offering the house special? Just, you know, he just looks over and it's just like, do, do I... Do I, do I fucking... Do I know you? I don't you know, know do you? Have I put just, back together some friend of yours guts? Give, Probably not. Give me... I don't think so. Wordy. Give me a roll. Alright. Fair plus two? No, not for that. I was gonna do I was doing a lore roll to see if you had put together one of Jacob's gang banger right. friends. Right. <clears throat> the nils to be specific. So it's yep. just just like, you know, just not necessarily like a mean mug, but it's just like no, I can't say that you have. And then again, just the paranoia sets in. It's like, oh, fuck, are these the feds? <laughs> J- J- Jacob, Jacob, no. by this point, has put a, um, water, a glass of water, of real trademark water, um, right. and a um, real trademark beer. Just so you know, any, like, tags, like, med tag is ripped off. So there's, like, yeah, no it's, it's It's near but, unmistakable gear, though. Sure. Right, so that, that's you know, yeah. ironically enough, that's just like, oh, these are the fucking feds. It's not They're just getting this lazy now. <laughs> yeah, it's not the it's not the med tech label on the front or, uh, breastplate that's giving you away. <laughs> right. It's pretty much the entire ensemble, as it were. Um, right. Okay, um, uh, fucking uh, Avery kicks you the uh, the water and the beer. Um, fucking, you hear the 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 uh, you know the. Doo-doo. Uh, noise that you have just paid for something. Um, push uh, push invoices are a thing in this world where you pay you can be you can pay for things whether you have agreed to pay for them or not. Um, so push invoicing is very much a feature in this world. Uh, Caboose looking very paranoid with that fact. <laughs> wait 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 what? <laughs> we established something about this character beforehand. We're all dead, bud. Um, okay, um, and so, 
Carr is probably next, given that, oh, well, cheese sandwich versus, oh, God, yeah, Karen's getting there first. For sure, the bitch will ride a fucking driver to get there. Um, so, <laughs> you're not driving fast enough. Um, so, what's, um, how does Karen uh, make an entrance? Well, mm -hmm. let me, uh show you what she is sporting okay and, uh karen walks to this nasty bar and uh immediately notices that the person behind the bar looks like they might actually be establishment associated she's got a keen sense for that so she goes up to the bar and asks the bartender, excuse me, sir, what's your name? He looks at you with the discerning eye of somebody who's worked customer service for a very long time and says unhesitatingly, Steve. Oh, Steve, this wonderful establishment you have here. Do you have any wine, perchance? Uh, I don't think the owner stocks wine. I can check in the back, though. Mm. <sighs> Take a washer. Okay, coming right up. He um he shuffles off to the, the uh, far end of the bar and goes. You know, you hear the the fr <laughs> fridge, and he goes. You know, he he goes. Do you want it in the bottle? Yes. You see him like reach down under the bar and just uh, right on, right right across the top just absolutely licks it. <laughs> Fuck it. He goes coming right up. I got I got a nice special cold one for you. And he walks down to the end of the bar and puts it in front of you and goes, "There you go, ma'am." Thanks. Ah, you're welcome. You hear the also ding of the credits coming out. And then you hear the ding of your uh, bank account notifying you that you need more credits in your account. <laughs> um, uh, yes, AJ, Dalton. Dalton is speeding there in his own car. Okay, but I was going to ask. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, a driver who does driver gigs without his own car is a fucking, you, you know, or at least one of the plethora of cars you identify as your cars. You know? It is true. This, this, this car identifies as mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Dal Dalton, uh, so, uh, so I'm pulling up, right? I, yes. So... I, I, I'm pulling up, and uh, usually uh, I wait in the car to get a communication about who I'm meeting and when I'm meeting. Sometimes they'll come to my car. Like, there's there's some scenarios. Mm -hmm. Since I haven't received anything, though, uh, Dalton uh, is going to head inside to, like, maybe sneak, like, a, a low alcohol drink or something just because he's here anyway. Might as well. All right. Well, um, so as you enter the bar, you know, um, the regulars, they definitely don't pay much attention to anybody. Avery, of course, glances up, but then quickly just goes back to what he was doing. What did the rest of you do? What did you do? Who turns? Who observes? Who does what? I always give the eye just whoever's coming in. You see a balding, middle-aged, overweight, schlubby dude in sweatpants and a wife beater uh, shirt. And absolutely, there's like a mustard stain on the shirt for sure. And this dude is wearing like flip-flops and just does not fit in basically anywhere in this city quite frankly but you can feel the confidence exude off this dude this dude is convinced he's a rock and roll star aj what do you do uh survey the bar look at uh this menagerie of interesting uh deplorables 
and uh, feeling like Dalton fits right in. Uh, I'm gonna go towards Avery, towards the bar. I like. I, I feel like I've drank here before once or twice, but I don't know how good Avery I, and I are. I don't know. If give I'm me a right. give me a roll. Okay. I got some weirdos. Mm. Mediocre. Um, as you, uh, approach the bar, Avery's already got a, um, a real light beer, um, out on the bar, looks at you and goes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm on the clock. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> do any of you who are already at the bar have any reactions to the entrance of... Dalton here. Okay. okay. Darren definitely would. Yeah, I was looking at you the entire time, Aster. I'm literally just mm-hmm. staring at your your fucking video here, wait, waiting. I'm like, <laughs> just speak up. Come on, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Karen immediately saunters up to him. And like, hello. And what would your lovely name be? Oh, hi. I, I, I'm Dalton. Nice to meet you. Dalton, it's a pleasure. I'm Karen. Karen Thorne. You, you bring- seem really nice. I feel like uh, I feel like you uh, you got good vibes about you. Oh, you might have seen me around. It depends on what corners of the net do you get yourself onto. I mean, I I literally get around. It's what I do. What are you drinking there? Oh, uh, you. I mean, usually I go a lot harder than this, but it's, uh, you know, it's a work night, so I'm trying to keep my pace, you know, trying to avoid going hard, but, uh, you know, catch me on a weekend, and I'm I'm down in shots all day. Oh, it looks tasty. Do you mind if I have a sip? Absolutely, please. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Oh, oh it's, this is really good. Do you... Are are you you're you're thirsty, right? Would you be would you maybe be willing to trade me with my drink? I really like yours, but I'm not really feeling like water right now. Would you want to maybe swap drinks with me? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I, hey, I mean, if you want a fresh one, I could probably I could probably get that going. I mean, if we I, I'm all about sharing, but uh, let me buy you a drink. <sighs> It would just be wonderful. I mean, but you really shouldn't let this water go to waste. I mean, if you really feel Oh, I mean, thirsty. yeah, that's that's real water. That's the good yeah. stuff. Yeah, don't let it go to waste. Uh, I, I I exchange drinks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, so good. I'll have to order it next time. As as you uh, have you drank the real water yet, Dalton? Oh, I'm yeah, lo- lost in Karen's eyes, chugging it away. Um, Avery is if if anybody is paying attention to Avery, he's at the other end of the bar, just fucking shaking his head, just staring at another fucking middle aged dude who's a schmuck, just sort of just bro coding, like staring at you, just going, Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> I just hold a gun against my head and like look to Avery. Yeah, he gives you, he gives you the look. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> Karina, what kind of entrance? A last minute entrance as well. Uh, does Krill make? Got a large distance she had to travel. Yep, definitely the last one to get there. Um, she's not looking to make, like, some flashy entrance. She's hobbling in. Like, her decrepit form is, like, she's looking up at the sign, knowing it hasn't been recently, but she's at least drank in this place once to avoid regulars at a different place. So, who knows what she's walking into. Like, the front door, she kind of gently opens with her one good hand and it's like 
she's just like checking to see like how populated it is. Uh, she sees then, she sees Roy and Jet uh, at two of the regulars at one table. Uh, she sees uh, Ivan um, straight up like <laughs> fuck it, at one other table in the corner, and um, she sees a woman in just the finest designer gear absolutely working a fucking middle-aged schlub um you see at the one end of the bar away from them somebody decked out in med tech gear and then next to this person you see a, a cyber sex robot in a thong and a beanie absolutely just mm, like buzzing <laughs> right and then in the midst of all of this you have just the sketchiest looking gangbanger that is just sort of chilling he's like okay room's not the most friendly and just off of one of her shoulders a piece of what looked like her meta okay so like her whole back is this like power system she doesn't really have a back as you guys would think where you expect a spine continue with machinery over top of it and so where you would expect on her hunched metallic back she grabs something and then unfurls into a little flying drone and she gives herself a wider view of the room as she tries to make her way through it. Kind of like hobbling, trying to make sure she's not like bumping into anybody. And she walks up to Troy. And I'm going to try and make a diagnostic check or anything like that on him. Give me a roll. And Troy, give me a roll. Oh, come on! Nobody is rolling nice tonight. Always remember, fate rolls are not D&D rolls. We use a weighted set of dice that weight towards zero. So you, you literally will roll zeros most of your fate campaign career. Just just okay. get used to it. Um, so here's the deal. You absolutely can um, run a diagnostic scan on Troy. Troy, this person is running a diagnostic scan on you. Do you wish to allow it to happen? Um, he, Troy actually is surprisingly kind of resistant to it. He, he's finding it maybe a bit invasive and perhaps maybe even a bit... It's bringing something up in him. Then what I'm going to ask of you is, there we go. Um, either because of your roles and the way, uh, the way that, let's see, what's your, okay. So that'd be okay. And then you would be. Oh, yeah, there's no fucking way. Um, you either have to, for the first time in this session, you got to start spending fate points and invoking stunts and working to avoid this diagnostic scan because the, the individual who is performing this scan is very competent at doing this and your ability to deceive this, this entity is not as capable as the scan so either you need to start bending fate to your will using some of your aspects and stunts and contest this action or we narratively uh move forward um well i don't really know which of my stunts would really you'd need to be useful huh you'd need to clear four What do you mean clear four? You're four in the hole if you want to contest this. So you need two invocations to because uh, they're two points apiece. Stunt could get you two. Aspect invocation could get you two. 
And so you the the stunts are uh, are free as far as points go, but the aspect invocations require points to be used. And so you're four points in the hole to be able to contest this successfully. Uh, I guess then Troy's not really going to try and resist, but he's just well, kind of, he's leaning away going. What you can do is narratively resist it, but okay. not be able to resist it. You two can have an interaction here where you, you want to narrate this out, where Troy's not happy about this and attempts to resist it, but Krill here is capable. Um, Troy's not entirely certain why he's resisting this yet. Something... There's some kind of disconnected memory being brought up that is not entirely registering with him, but is still activating something of, this has been bad in the past. So he kind of just... He doesn't really do anything to resist. He doesn't try to push Krill away. He doesn't try to say, no, don't do that. He's just kind of going... Like, you know, leaning yeah. back... Instinctually going, trying to distance himself from the source yeah, instinctually, of this. Yeah, instinctually trying to distance himself. At this point, Krill has to speak up. She's just like... Troy, unit, are you, are you okay? Your diagnostics are completely... C -c 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 you see her start glitching, where, like, even the little LEDs on her start flickering. And you seem like you're m malfunctioning. Troy pauses and ponders for a moment and says, am I malfunctioning? As Troy says this to Krill, am I malfunctioning? The, um, you hear the... Scrape of the back door open once more. And in slides a very unbecoming, easily mistaken, everyday, if somebody designed a person to disappear into a crowd of people, this is like generic person. But, everybody give me rolls. Plus two. Oof. God fucking damn, dude. Are we using notice? You're rolling. They see me rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, why I'm am guessing I investigate? Why am I missing one? Aspen. Uh, oh, Aspen rolled. That's why Aspen yeah, physically rolled. rolled. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't looking at your screen. I forgot. Oh, it was plus yeah. two. Who's that? Okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> um. Then. I'll type it in chat. Ka Karen and um. Wait. 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 Oh, I saw. Okay. Karen and uh Jacob. Is it, this is a go-between. This is a go-between. This is a fucking fixer's go-between. You've, you've seen this a thousand times. Some nondescript person walking into a back, uh, back door of a bar. You, let, you clock it immediately. You're just like, oh, okay, you know, we're on the clock now. Right? So Jacob and Karen immediately know they're on the clock. Everybody else, on the other hand, well, Troy and Krill are brand new to this. Dalton is a wannabe. He barely knows which way is up and down. And Patty... I'm kind of focusing on these yeah. robots right now. It's such a weird interaction. Patty's doing her own thing, just trying to fuck me. Long day. You already had your hands in some dude's guts. You're on a second job for the day already. And you've got like a robot tripping balls in front of you and shit. Like, it just, you know... The door didn't register. No big deal. Dalton still 100% thinks he's going to go home with Karen, so... 
fully <laughs> lost in the sauce. Nice, nice. Um, right where I want, yeah. F- so Avery looks over, just gives a quick nod. Room's ready for you, Zareed. Thanks. He begins to walk towards the little, little, just as you walk in through the back door, there's a little storage room there, a little side room, and there's a little another door to the right. And Zareed just walks in. Uh, he opens the door, begins to walk in. He stops. He turns around, looks at your group, and then walks in the door. You doing all right, Troy? I believe our job has arrived. What? I don't know who else is here for this, but I'm going to be following whatever the hell that was. Great. Oh, I got to oh, deal with her tonight. What? Just internally, Jacob's just thinking, like, she's just going to announce that. <laughs> this fucking room. Just, Fair I, enough. Just, all right, then. Fuck it. I guess. I was just talking to my little. No, 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 here. no, no, no. That was said no, internally. It's in, the, it's in the dome. Yep. Just yeah. you, you did not it's hear that. Judgment, judgment, judgments, and critiques and character assassinations have begun. Um, <laughs> okay, so Karen gets up and begins to move towards the room, um, probably with a bit of a judgmental eye from Jacob. Right. Of course. Right. Same job, so eventually just got to follow. Work's got to work, right? Yep. All right. I'm just like, you know what? So fuck it, I guess. Followed, uh, uh, J. Uh, sorry, fuck it. Uh, Karen walks, uh, walk, uh, begins to walk towards the back room, f- quickly followed by J. Well, not quickly, but followed by Jacob. Um, Karen, is you? Do I have a heads up yet? Uh, well, I mean, c- c- Karen basically announced that there's like a yeah. gig going down. Yeah, I know like, I oh. don't work alone, so something's going. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume my place mm. okay. and, Next, and follow that. Quit you very Dalton. follow puppy dog like Karen. Yes. Yeah, okay. Dalton's just like you know what, pussy's pussy dog. I'm just kidding. <laughs> D- Dal- Dalton, Dalton, you get you were you were behind Karen there just ba- barely, and then uh, 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 Jacob. Sorry, uh, Jacob, you were just behind uh, Karen there, and Dalton just very excitedly, like you know that sort of half step, right? Like just just enough to get ahead of you, just just enough, right? He's he's sort of pushing his way in there a little bit. Uh, what are the, what are the other three of you are up to? Hey Troy, you good? Uh, Troy jitters a little bit and then looks over to Patty and says, I don't understand. Okay, so I I guess, I don't know what robots do, but I guess you're here for this, so if you want to follow me to the back room, nice to meet ya, and I, like, look at Krill. Um, uh, hi. 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 Uh, Patty, um, I'm, I'm going to take Troy to the back room. Are you coming with, or are you staying here? Um, give me a second. And then she kind of turns, and that little drone that's actually been hiding somewhere in the corner of the room comes out and flies down in front of her. Give me, um, give me a quick roll. All right. Minus two, shit. It was not being stealthy, if anything. Um. See if there's anything I can give you. No. Okay. Um. So I, I was like, look, you had that drone up in the corner. It was an easy notice opportunity. I'm like, I'll see if I got something to give you. But honestly, it's not much going on in this bar. There might not be a, not- There might be a reason it was chosen. Keep in mind, that will be a very natural thing for her to do. When she enters a room she's not care- no, wary dude. of, she'll like throw it She'll throw it up, and if she's really afraid, one of her stunts is to quietly deploy it, like, as mm-hmm. quietly as possible. All right. Um, 
No, actually, when the drone comes down in front of her, she just holds her hand up and she's like, who's going for the meeting and who's staying to order the drink? And Kai, could you do rock, paper, scissors with me real quick? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, yep. paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> she's like, all right, I'm going to the meeting. Can, can, can you order me an ectoblast? With nutrient pain? Yeah, you know what I like. All right. <laughs> the little drone just sits on the counter looking at Avery. Okay. Um, Avery's probably going to take a minute and just sort of stare at the drone. Um, not They're nonverbal entirely. So. Yeah. So, drone, J- Avery, Avery's just going to be left with the drone for a bit. Um, you're headed back. Um, Patty, are you, uh, like, what's the status? I like coach Troy okay. into the room. Troy, you're being very gently pushed. <laughs> Troy uh, does not resist. Cool. All right, as you guys walk in, there is a table uh, in the back, a uh, typical uh, round table um, setup. Um, Avery has it in the ba- uh, in this back room for the occasional card game or a little bit of, you know, side gambling. You never know. Maybe pick up a few extra creds. Um, and so... As you uh, as you approach the table, uh, um, there's somebody uh, there's somebody sitting there uh, at the table already. Like I said, he's he's Zareed is essentially the the generic, and he's he's been altered to look this way. He's done it intentionally to himself um, in an attempt to try and remain as indistinguishable as possible in this cityscape to do his job. And this is his job. And as you all come in and begin to take your seats around the table, Zareed looks at you and says, Look, I know none of you know each other. I know some of you don't even know why you're here. Here's the deal. You lot are nobodies. We want nobodies. Why do we want nobodies? Because you don't know anything we're gonna keep it that way here's what you do need to know down by the new convention center out back there's where the uh the storage warehouse and maintenance facilities exist adjacent to that is a park adjacent to that are where the yachts get pulled up and there's the boardwalk and a series of shops there's a meeting being held in the storage area behind the convention center. Your job, and he looks around at each and every one of you as he says this, no one comes in the building without someone inside the building saying they come in the building. Are we clear? Affirmative. What? So like no nobody in the building. Th- there's already someone in the building. We've got to be there for them. Yes. To let another keep, person in the keep building. Keep people like yourself out of the building. Okay. Okay. We're I, nobodies. I, I guess, that means it. we don't know either. People entering the building are on a need to know basis. We do not need to know. Ah, this one gets it. Oh. Okay. okay. Thank you. I, I get it now. All right, 2,500 creds, you've been promised. I'll give you 1,000 creds up front. We'll transfer the 1,500 as soon as the job is done. As soon as the job is done, you are free to walk away. The only thing we want from you, keep it quiet, keep people away from the facility, don't let the meeting be disrupted. Got it? Yes. A little, like, barely human hand. He likes you. He, he, yes. Does loud noises, including gunfire, count as, like, distra- like causing a distraction to the meeting itself? Look, you do what you got to do, but I'll tell you right now, there's NCPD, uh, NCPD, NSFPD is, uh, is, uh, is guaranteed to show up if you pop off too many rounds. And I don't know, um, I don't know if you lot keep up with the convention schedule 
everybody give me a roll. What kind of convention is this? It's a Comic Con for convention. <gasps> Plus four. Oh my God, Karen. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> by miles. Karen was at it yesterday. Um, she was already oh. scoping it out. Um, oh my fucking god! I don't know if you lot know uh, know what's at, uh, what the convention is, but. I'd probably try not to make too much noise. Now, for the purposes of gameplay, not a single one of you knows this. Try to keep your meta game in check. Karen, it's a security uh, and uh, arms convention. Okay. Filled, filled to the brim with corporate security and net runners and riggers and deckers and gear of all sorts. Hey. The convention center, you would know this, Karen, is a new high-tech polymer bubble construction with multiple levels that, uh, a, that hangs out over the bay. But there is a back area. There's a back wall, and there's a road that curves around past this park that is adjacent to the convention center. And that wall has a road that comes right down it, and there's parking and the storage and maintenance area that leads in into the park and a series of trees that sort of... Surra a rows of trees that surround the park that are adjacent to the sweeping road that go past it. And all of that is, of course, set upon a boardwalk. And there's two-story shops near the boardwalk, and all of that looks out over the, the bay that they're trying to revitalize. So, 2,500 creds? Don't let the... Me do what? How long is the meeting done? A little over an hour. All right. When the meeting is done, your job is done. You'll be paid instantly. You're free to go. Everybody understood? Understood. Good. Zareed gets Dalton up. Dalton looks a little confused, but doesn't want to look stupid in front of Karen again. Fair enough. Zareed, Zareed gets up. And hold on, Zareed gets up and hands a business card with a f uh, with a com uh, a com ID number on it. To yep, it's what I thought. That actually worked out the way I thought it would narratively. Uh, Krill, <laughs> Zareed sets a card down in front uh, in front of you with a com ID number on it, and then just walks out of the room. He poorly picks it up because it's a little delicate object in her fi her oh, the, there's literally a word I've been using for it. Uh, manipulators are just terrible at it. Okay. But eventually it the card's in her hands and she puts it in a pocket. Cool. Alright, that's that's yours to keep. Um the All meeting right, so the, the meetings the meeting starts. At 12 o'clock. What time is it? It's 11. It what was 11.30 11? when you arrived at the bar. Oh. Okay. All right, let's 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 get it going. Let's get it going. Let's get on the road. Who's got a car? Oh, I, I, actually, we got to be there. Yeah, I got, I got just... Keep in, got just keep, in mi keep in mind, you guys are not very far from the convention center. You are not... You are basically... Down a side street, down a maid street, take a little bit of the road the other way, and then turn right sort of situation. You're not that far from the docks and the industrial portion of the town that they are attempting to revitalize with this convention center build. All right. Let's get the show on the road. Uh, Patty here. Uh, we met, met at the evening. Give me uh, any drugs you're using. And uh, I've got some a pint at most of universal blood shit. So if you start bleeding, I can put you back together. We also need to get some pants and clothes for this guy. I don't see that much of an issue. Their polymer surface would be very thermal, would be very thermal regulating. Clothes are not that required. It's 
less about thermal regulating and more about fitting it. Um, oh. As much as I love seeing a Model 3 on display, uh, we really need to be covering it up. Model 3. Yes, that's logical. Yeah. I'm the not last, three. The last thing we need the, the cops on us for is some fucking idiot out here and doing some public uh, public exposure. If we're if we're going to have attention, it might as well be the right kind for the right reasons. So, It'll be... Go ahead. Two minutes in, get them parachuted, pants, whatever. We'll go. I'm, I mean, I got I got a spare tank top in the in the trunk. Well, we'll get them pants. Problem solved. Does anyone here have any clue exactly where we're going? Convention center. It's down the street. I I feel yeah. I Dal feel like with Dalton, Dalton like automatically driving. would. Um, Jacob yeah. automatically would. Being a street kid, Patty automatically would. Probably uh, probably. Um, Krill and Troy are questionable. Um, uh, uh, I can find it. Yes, you definitely, it. all it would take is a quick net connection and you'd know where it is. You'd have fucking images of it. Good. It's a Troy, very, no idea. It's a very highly publicized and published, uh, uh, event space. They are after all trying to gentrify the, the industrial area. I mean, revitalize. <laughs> Patty receives an electronic message with one of the longest lists of like balancing vitamins, uh, like anti rejection meds, like anything to keep her uh, like robotic heart <laughs> yeah. working. Yeah, it's one of those moments. Where, like, oh, you're just strapped together, aren't you? Um, uh, Patty, yeah. Patty, when you get it on the comm device, it you get a list and you're like, Oh fuck, this list is huge. And you go to just like scroll it a little bit. And then you realize you see the scroll bar on the side and it's like this small yeah. and you're just like, <laughs> it just keeps going. It doesn't stop. Yes. If you have a medical thing for balancing someone's uh, like Patty systems, she'll need it. Patty, Patty, I'm going to need you to roll. Okay. Oh, let's see if let's see if Patty can just condense this all into two pills. No, no, no. I, well, we'll we'll we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do some things here first. Okay, Patty. Oh, plus two, plus two. Congratulations. Your will holds out. You reach the end of the list. <laughs> <laughs> Zechromethadine and Xylostran. Oh, yeah, of course it's I, also I, I also see you have a constant um, stream of Zoloft with a. I don't even know what this is, but yeah, we're putting that. Okay, cool. The yeah, Zoloft is to help sleep. Yeah, and all right, cool. Do you have your five-minute intervals here? Because I'm looking at like three hours, two hours, twelve hours. Already been blended. Already had the nutrient paste shake. Right. The next four hours I'm covered. Don't worry, but appreciate it, Doc. I did, cool. did you see her start glitching? <laughs> and then she grabs a vial from her thigh and then stabs into her other thigh. It's like, now my systems are better. All right, cool. I've got some adrenaline shots, so if your heart starts slowing down too much, we'll pick it back up. More likely to overclock than it is to slow down. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and I assume the rest of you aren't that complicated. I mean, it sends you nothing. I do not require medication. D Dalton leans in really sneakily. I mean, if you got a Viagra too, I probably need one. I was gonna, I was gonna actually compel a character aspect here, and so this is the first time. Um, Jacob, Jacob, what's up? If you wanna, if you want a fourth fate point, you got three, right? If you want a fourth fate point, send Patty. Just a list of illegal drugs that you want to acquire that you didn't get from just your like, guy earlier. Just, yeah, yeah, you didn't get to your hookup earlier. Just send your fucking order list over to Patty. Yeah, just you know what? Fuck it. You know, I just I, need that. I need me some painkillers. I'm invoke. I'm invoking. Do what you gotta do. Um, if you'll take if you'll take the invocation, um, consider yourself at four fate points. I would like to sniff out the bullshit. <laughs> oh, the whole list is bullshit. All right, yeah. cool. I'm like, well... No, but I'm going to need you to yeah. roll for that. Okay. All right, let me... 
Wait, uh, I need I need a roll from Cat and Wordy. All right. But... Did Cat just write I need speed on this list? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a list. Um, it's all the good stuff you need a script for. Pretty much. Jacob sends over a, just a a list, like a shopping list of illegal pharmaceuticals, and you immediately just this is bullshit. Like this, yeah. this is this gangbanger's trying to get you to do this drug run for him. Hey, here's what yeah. I do. I, I I pull out two uh, tabs of Tylenol and I put it in his hand. I say, "There you go, bud. Got what you needed." Look, you gotta try. You know how it is. <laughs> I ain't judging. I've been there. Um. All right. <laughs> May I make a quick suggestion? Seeing as we've been going for mm, two hours. Let's take a little break. So, you guys are uh, at the bar trying to figure out, uh, you're in the la last time we saw you, we're in the back room, um, trying to figure out how to GTFO. You got about 15 minutes um, to get your asses in place and maybe scope out some location, see some things. It is a very time-limited, crunch-factor sort of um, deal that you're dealing with. So, the floor is yours. We got to get Troy some pants. So Any, anybody have pants? <laughs> I'm wearing them, but I don't think I, I, I honestly, I might have a change of clothes in the trunk, but oh. I have the car. I, Oh, you have a car. I Wonderful. do not require clothing. I mean, I, I Troy, I, I have cars. It's not about requiring. Oh. It's about blending and realizing the gravity of the situation and just kind of just knowing the place beforehand and the sort of fuckery that's about to go down with this ragtag group of people. Mm -hmm. Jacob just kind of goes deuces and just fucking walks, just decides to walk out of the room and sprint there to see if he can scope the place out ahead of time okay. for the rest of the group. Um, can I attempt to throw a dro drone on him before he leaves? Um, you can, yeah, I mean, absolutely, as to whether he allows it, notices it, et cetera, et cetera, is up for grabs, but yeah, by all means, of course you can. Still a little stone, still a little drunk. I... So. I'm going to make a roll for that, that's a plus one, um, I don't know what it'd be versus, but yeah, no, my, dro my drone tries to at least land on your shoulder quickly. Roll cat. Uh... Kai, while Cat is rolling, I'm just going to say that uh, 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 Dalton pulls out his communicator and uh, <laughs> beboops some buttons. So when we get outside, it'll be ready. Um, well, see, here's the thing is even in his degraded state, Jacob notices a fucking little whirring drone on his shoulder. Now, that's up to Jacob to decide what he does about. That just kind of just fucking jumps a little bit again and he's not he's used to not working alone but usually it's what people that kind of just know the program so obviously a little bit of adjustment period just like you know just looks back at uh crow was it mm -hmm. okay so looks she, back at crow and just he just gives a little wave and the drone up near your shoulder just goes like <laughs> just you know he just just kind of gives a bit of a side eye and just eventually just just goes back on his way. Just cool. Then um, yeah. the one thing I'm going to need from Karina is a roll. Actually, hey, holy shit! So as you take the fuck off with your legs, that drone is holding on for dear life, but <laughs> successfully holding on nonetheless. So it is like flapping in the wind sort of situation, you know? Like it's, it, it's, it's, it's flight stabilizers are probably just. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck it, dude. So you are booking it. Um, I'm going to say you got 14 minutes left, my man. You got 14 <laughs> minutes left. Um. All right. So we'll we'll move we'll move on back yeah basically we'll move on back to uh, to the rest of the group and we'll circle back around to what kind of recon Jacob is getting up to start thinking about that too by the way um, rest of the group 
I'm sending 20 credits over to Avery, say like, hey, thanks, and then heading out. Yeah, I'm following. Thanks for taking I'm... care of that. Yes, we should be getting out. Yeah, I'm going to take off to go to get the car around. Okay. Then um, Avery uh, Avery gives Patty, a, you know, like a, a nod and a little bit of a knowing look and then looks at the rest of the group and just goes, don't work too hard. <laughs> I pull on my backpack and I'm like, all right, here we go. Time for some dumbasses. All right, so car around front. What do you do, AJ? What's what's uh, Dalton as I, doing? As I step outside, clickety clack on my phone and like uh, a, a a very very nice but um, low profile. Uh, black not like stretch limo but like big enough for like a group of people comes rolling around the corner uh bumping uh not not super loud but bumping some like some of the era beats uh <laughs> i turn to my <laughs> exactly i turn to my my cohorts and i'm I, i'm like yeah, sorry about the music. I, I, I was driving for a prom. Uh, apparently the theme was cocaine, so... My bad. Presses a button and the music turns off. Who the fuck goes to the prom? I, I don't know. Prom? I just drive these people. Karen gets into the passenger seat. Uh, uh, as Dalton holds the door. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm pulling the clothes out from the back and giving it to Troy. So glad to know you know. Troy is now dressed already. exactly like Dalton. No, oh no. God. Well, I was gonna say, we, did those clothes come from you, or did they come from the prom? So they. Came... Oh no! I was gonna say, oh, like, oh god. Think, oh. As, as a real conversation, Dude, up. yeah. These these cars should come with like whatever, whatever situation they were left with. So yeah, you you might have a dress or like a tuxedo, something along those lines. Suit. Caboose, uh, roll, resources. Oh no. Oh, no. Caboose, oh, no. it could be the pinstripe, or you could have the most fabulous <laughs> ruffles. Hey. No, I, I'm Either so way, excited. you'll look wonderful. <laughs> uh, I don't have any pluses to my resources, so I guess that's just going to be a flat roll. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh. shit. Caboose, Caboose I'm going to let you narrate what Troy pulls out of the pile and puts on at the behest of these ragtag weirdos you found yourself with by happenstance. So, but I'm, I'm guessing there's just like what, a garbage bag of like clothing or something? Just imagine what a teenager is going to a prom in 2046 might be wearing. What do teenagers wear now? <laughs> you asking me? <laughs> oh, Jesus. It depends on how depressed they are. Yeah. I mean, that is the big thing. Are we talking uh, urban teenagers or fucking... Troy digs through his little Jesus pile story. of teenage clothing. I drive for rich people. Okay. Um, what do rich people wear? What do... If, if it's if it's for like a, a prom for teenagers, would this technically be smaller than his current build? No, teenager teenager tight. teenagers are multitudes of sizes, especially in you know <clears throat> in NSF in twenty forty six. He's you know, also a twink. Genetic engineering no, he's exists. He's not in twink mode right now. Yeah, genetic oh. engineering exists. Augments uh, augments exist. Diet and exercise exist. Right, like so. There's teenagers of all shapes and sizes. Uh, so what do you want? He finds a bit of a boring, but still kind of decent-ish three-piece suit. Okay. Complete with a uh, with a uh, white undershirt, um, black coat, and black pants, and a Best. red tie. Best. He's kind of he, he's kind of looking like a pink agent Smith now. Secret agent man. Yes. If, if it's a three piece, does it have like the does it have the vest? Um. 
Yeah, it has the long sleeve vest shirt. I don't. I don't fucking. Does know it? Shoes. it no, the important called. question is: Does it have the ruffles that they have in like tuxedos for proms? That's the important question. That is a good question. Yes, you know I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love you, people. <laughs> okay. Um, just for lore purposes, taking all of that down. Um, do you continue to wear the speedo and beanie? Yes. Okay. Troy is not taking anything off. He's only putting on. <laughs> so he's we can to do this all man. over again. He's what wearing a nice, this? he's wearing a you know a, a mediocre <laughs> nice suit, something a teenager fucking buys to look nice at the prom. Okay. And Welcome still wearing maximalism. a beanie. Better than to maximalism. Naked. All yes. right. So, all right. How do you guys proceed? Everybody pops in the car. Fucking Karen's in the front seat with with Dalton here. Karen immediately tunes the radio to exactly what she wants. Of course. Which is which is uh, what? Um the poppiest of pop that is oh available. This is I, 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 I lean over to Krill and I'm like, can you change the radio? I could. And then you just start hearing different music just blaring inside her head instead. No. (laughs) Troy instinctively just, like, opened the door and let everyone else in first. Aw, good Troy. Oh, thank you. And Krill, like, you know how, like, Scooby and Shaggy sit in the very back? Like, they don't even care about us. That's where Krill is. And also, he doesn't get in. He's just standing there with the door open. Troy, get in. Troy gets in. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Then we're going to, with that, <laughs> you guys are in route. We'll deal with that in a second. We'll flash back, cut back to Jacob. Jacob, what are you up to? Initially, just, you know, hit that tree line. It was just like, you know, he wasn't quite sure if it wasn't, you know, if the, if there was anything to look out for. Seemingly, it just seemed, seems like the coast was clear. So just whimsically jumping out of a tree, he fucking, you know, he makes his way to the two-story shop, thinking that he'll work his way from there, and then eventually hit the uh, workshops and uh, the... Okay. Workshop and store. The uh, the two story buildings, uh, the two story shops out by the waterfront are just that. They're exactly like tourist bait convention center. Um, oh god, you got to meet yourself already when you're going in that bag. Sorry. Um, it's just it's tourist bait for the con- convention center and people who are like maybe walked into the park for the day because it is down the you know the road that sort of thing. And there are boat docks there as well. So if you've got sort of like the boating shop, you've got an ice cream shop, you've got, you know, yeah, this sort of odds and ends of like a convention center downtown touristy sort of area. Maybe something where you can get, you know, a, 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 a plastic wristband with your name on it and maybe a fake picture with, you know, a celebrity in a booth and stuff like that. Um, there's not a ton going on um, other than, you know, various people coming and going it all seems above board to your uh to your you know the the analysis of your streetwise gaze these are just normies going about their day buying ice cream and shit um as you look back across the park the park is actually not that inhabited um there's a series of bushes and um sort of uh, trees around, uh, that line the edges um, and you can see over by the uh, the drone um, building where the sort of like the the maintenance drones come out and take care of the the park and you mow the grass and water the bushes and trim things and all of that. Um, yeah, and there's a parking lot between the two the two floors. Uh, the two the two story shops look out over the bay. Um, it's just a flat back, 
and then um, sort of an open area um, that you can walk across with the floor, uh, the shop fronts uh, looking over the bay. And then, of course, underneath as well. If you make your way around the back of that, there's some trees off there to the side as you walk towards the back. And, of course, the covered v- VIP for, you know, a couple of the business owners in the shops, VIP parking and then a parking area. And, of course, the park is off to your right. There's the water features off to the right as well. And then that would leave you looking at the sort of the back of the uh, the storage in the workshop and the office space that uh, sort of is is you know attached to the convention se- attached to the convention center's function. Well, for now, being in the storage shop, <clears throat> Jacob just kind of looks around, just like just a little bit of a leer towards the crowd, just like, you know, just wondering how these people could just fucking justify spending their whatever small savings they can get from their wa- from their wages, just fucking just buy in whatever petty bullshit. Despite oh, the, that. Oh, there's absolute, like, absolute, everything's overpriced. Everything's right. overpriced. Like every single thing is overpriced. Yeah, for sure. Right. This is, this is schmuck central. Right. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, damn, just just the average person can fucking is willing to not only just plan like a fucking trip, put importance on it, take pictures, and then just drive out here and waste time and money on this bullshit. Despite that, he still ends up getting himself uh, still ends up getting himself of a, a little vanilla cone just for the just for the fuck shits and giggles of it. Munchies of hit is what it is. Give me a give me a roll. Fuck it. <clears throat> Damn it. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, you over here while you're in line at the uh, at the, the the ice cream shop, getting yourself a nice little little ice, a little vanilla cone. Um, you hear a couple of guys there. Yeah. They're in fairly like middle management, civil, uh, civil bureaucratic style suits, decent looking suit, but you know, that's a cheap suit. Uh, like this motherfucker probably is middle management sort of territory purchasing something like that. Right. And you overhear the two of these, um, talking about how, um, like they, that how he knew one of the security vendors. Um, I, I knew I, one of those guys, one of those guys for uh, years now. Yeah, he, he gives me a call whenever they got new gear, new tech that's you know coming up in the business. I, as far as he told me, everybody who's anybody is in there right now. It's loaded with law enforcement. You just overhear this in passing and behind you, you know, as you're getting your right. your ice cream cone. Um, how's the, um, how's the, the drive coming? It should only take you guys about eight minutes to get there. Uh, well, um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Dalton's driving not overly fast, but like doing the like 20 over the speed limit, like, like keeping it a clip and like getting through it. But he's like full on in dad mode, like talking about like. Like, like all, all his martial arts training from back in the day and like, oh, you know, like look, he look, <clears throat> specifically looks at uh, Patty and is, uh, uh, says, uh, oh, you know, back, back, back in my day, I, like I, I worked with MedTech before. I've, I've, I've seen those jackets before. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great service yeah. you do. Uh, well, I don't work for them anymore. Oh, that's too bad. They're the a great bunch of great bunch of uh, workers. Those ones, the med tech. They they. Uh, as long as you got insurance to pay it, I guess. Oh, I mean, of course. So you gotta have insurance. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know, man. Have you seen the people on the street? Ninety-five percent of those fucks don't have insurance. I mean, yeah, that's why you don't deal with them. <laughs> no, that's why I do deal with them. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, I, I get. I'm talking about MedTech. <laughs> yeah, I don't work for MedTech. They're a great bunch of guys, you know. I, children, I used to work with them. children. Hi, 
The fight right. going you call further. me child again, I'm gonna punch you. Mm, yeah, bring it. Um, so, I've noticed that our little tin friend in the back here doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot to help along on our mission in this endeavor. Uh, can have we have somebody, like, in charge of him? Uh, make sure that they that he follows them at least because I, I feel like he's gonna wander off if yeah. we don't rein him in a little bit. Yeah, I, I got it real easy for you. Hey, Troy. Yes. Can you take care of yourself? I have been taking care of myself for a month. See, he can take care of himself for a month. Problem solved. You give him all credit. The Troy units are very self reliable devices. Like I hate calling them that, really. I, I just me, me, we probably should be keeping track of him. Uh, ca- He's right behind ca- us. He's ca- caboose, caboose, roll for me. When um, when Krill said device, you felt something. Oh. She did say it in a way like she hates using that terminology too. It wasn't like a he's a device. It's like. They're really capable as devices no, go. Like, no, Caboose. Like, Troy has experienced things and processes things and understands things to a certain degree. But in that moment, Troy felt something. So anyway, mm. we're just going to... That's not outwardly react. Yeah, we're just gonna show it. We're just gonna we're just gonna let that be and let that happen. Um, so hey, Dalton, you got any uh, health issues? Hypoglycemia, insulin, <laughs> diabetics? What, what you need? I mean, my my blood pressure is all over the place. I mean, I shouldn't eat like I do, but uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I, you know, uh, after this, if you're feeling a little high, I can uh, pass you something. Oh, 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 that'd be great. Thanks. I appreciate that. J- you meant that guys are great. J- Jacob, I'm not kidding you. Wherever you were standing eating that ice cream, just suddenly you feel a little jealous, a little <laughs> FOMO. Just, 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 just a little something. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Um. <laughs> So, how do you guys, because Jacob is fully, like, in the uh, facility, like, in the vicinity at this point, and has started surveillance. How, Dalton, Dalton, how do you guys arrive? Uh, I forget the diagram in chat. Okay, I'm not going to pull a drift, but I'm going to, like, I'm just going to try and, like, pull up to the door real hard and smooth trying to uh, look like a badass what what door there's a variety uh, of doors yeah uh yeah you gotta check the, the thing yes i want to see that oh it's a little far back hang on eh, okay there we go hmm Uh, I guess I'll um, go into the parking lot between the trees and like towards storage. Okay. Cool. Little little squeal of the tires or just just pulling up. Ooh. I'm gonna I, I'm I'm gonna try not to uh, squeal the wheels, but I'm I'm driving a little recklessly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that your trouble for the vine there. Yeah, you... like I, I go a little hard. Despite you wanting to, like, understanding what you're doing here, despite mm-hmm. all that, it, you know, habits die hard. So you may come in a little hot on that parking. Um, go ahead and give me a roll. I believe in you. It's a little, it's a little tire squealy. But it's a limo. You really can't. You really didn't throw enough into it to whip it around. You don't seem to have garnered any excess attention. Uh, attention. Nobody's yelling at you or running at you. Um, but also, Dalton, nobody's running at you. No one's paying any attention to you. 
So win lose. Immediately turn around. You guys like that move? Huh? Huh? That was pretty good. It's pretty good song. Pretty solid move. I've seen better. Uh, oh, cool. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Stepping out of the stepping out of the back. Krill is trying to find her balance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I, uh, I knocked Krill's brain out. Uh, of Karina, I need a roll from you. Uh, yeah. Listen, for fragile, y'all, fragile. We're not kidding when we say this. It's all right. I've got my surgical hands. Um. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you're you're still in the positive. You're fine. You get it. You get it together. But like, you know, that was pretty much your limit. You're like that was. <sighs> So literally she's like grabbing the glass canister that supports her brain. It's like, <laughs> okay, good. Nothing's cracked. Nothing's cracked. Can you here, stop here. shaking? I'll, 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 ch- I'll check behind you. There's, there's a liquid in it that you see a brain literally floating in and you see the liquid like sloshing. Stuff. Okay. I hold it and I help to like balance it to where it eventually slows. Give me a roll. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I just <laughs> killed. I just killed Krill. <laughs> oh no! Just, oh, no. Just oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shaking it. No, all. you're you're fine. Your craft, your crafts is already a plus three. Fuck, dude. So you're oh, you're fine. Um, Krill, whatever whatever Patty did, did it didn't hurt, and it maybe helped a little bit. Uh, after Dalton actually asked that, though, something changes in, in uh, Troy just very briefly. Uh, like a subroutine or something just started. And he suddenly breaks from his usual monotone and actually says, that was amazing. And then goes straight back to monotone. I want rolls from everybody who was present. Nada. Holy shit. Patty and Krill both take note of that. No one else, it doesn't register. Uh, uh, Karen is a little too in herself to notice. And Dalton is a little too in Karen to notice. (laughs) Oh. Wanting to be. Oh my fucking god, dude. Uh, so, yeah. I, I already know where Jacob is. Oh, yes, you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. How far is he from us? Um, the, he, he's... The shops. Uh, he's he's just, like, right over there. You just gotta go up to the shops to get, get, to get him. I zip up my jacket to kind of hide the gear just a little bit. I don't, I don't want to draw too much attention. Give me... Nice. Yeah. It did. It did. It, it did look badass until it wasn't badass anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You know what? That's pretty on brand for me. Um, See, that, that's what happens gonna, when you roll minus two. Yeah, I'm gonna need a roll from you though. All right. A stealth roll. Yeah. Um. Like, look. The fact of the matter is, is that the MedTac gear, it puts a pretty uh, obvious silhouette on somebody. You know, it's a pretty obvious set of gear and armor and backpack and, you know, armaments. Um, yeah. Like, look, if somebody's stupid, drunk, or not paying attention, they totally wouldn't notice. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I accept this lot in life. Um. Okay. So... You guys have about five more minutes to get yourselves situated, maybe get a, a game plan going, maybe something, 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 until you are expected to be on the job. So, Anyone? okay, I'm actually going to do something. Um, Krill quickly sets up a... Um, an uplink note, but specifically uses bootstrappers, so it can't be, like, inverted. Okay. Um, she creates a small little, like, where people can look in, 3D projection, 
system. Now, only one area currently is lit up. It's near Jacob, as only one of her drones is currently out. But How she do... lets everyone else have access to that info. How? What's going on? Via, via what electronic medium? Okay, she sets up um, a virtual link. So I guess by specifically, Dalton cannot have access to it. Okay. Uh, anyone with um, either an external or an internal HUD system would be able to at least have access to it. Um, I don't know the full tech terms. So if you're that's, asking, I, like, that's am fine. I starting it, like it, a hotspot it, system or something yes. like that? Yeah, basically. Okay. Uh, private as hell. Okay. But yes. Give me a roll. All right. Anyone where uh, Flash Thompson went? Fuck. Not playing nice on me that time. Um, that's a plus three. Um, yeah. Um, you, for anybody who has high-end gear, uh, Troy, Krill, um, you're automatically, like, got three-dimensional connection. Like, you, too, can automatically see this in three dimensions and zoom in and out, whatever else you got to do. Full-on CSI enhance mode, right? You, two have that. Everybody else is reliant upon their comms device. So their information is multispectral and three-dimension, but what you get is a cell phone version of it. Oh, Okay, yeah, that's fine. So, so it takes you physically looking away from what you're doing to check. Yes. Great. So um, it's, it's there for you for information gathering, but it, you know, it's limited for I, you given the lack of neural interlace and HUD. I, I will say... Oh, it's just over here in the fucking Matrix. <laughs> I, I have a Bluetooth, right, though? Like, at least for, for talking? Like yeah, little, uh, yeah. you you guys can... Uh, base gear, uh, like, uh, yeah. basic, a, like, augmented reality, fucking eyepiece, earpiece, shit like that, if you want them. Yeah, like... I've they, got eyes. You know. I, I, love, the, I love the idea glasses. of Dalton's display. Still capable of 3D, <laughs> but it's like old CD-ROM 3D where it's just yeah. like hard pixel graphics slowly adjusting as it spins. So here's the I imagine like Google Glass. <laughs> oh God. So here's, so here's the deal. Since it's the first session, I'll just fucking absolutely hand wave this. Um, if you want like earpiece, little, little AR HUD, eyepiece, something like that in addition to your comms, you can have them. Um, in the future, any changes to your guys' gear past... Well, let's just say now, um, has to be narratively explained, has to be sourced, has to be shopped for, has to be purchased, that sort of thing. Cool. All right. Um, all right. Then uh, Krill has set up. Uh, what What exactly uh, is feeding into this um, this this information system, and what is it? You know, what is the nature of what's feeding in? Okay, so the drones are basically creating 360 panoramas. Like, they do little spins mm -hmm. just to update info as much as they can. Um, they're creating 3D environments. So how many of updating. them have you launched? There's only one right now. I was literally going to say, I think I'm actually going to spend a point, my fate to do efficiency protocol and launch my drones to span the area and get a full scan. Um, okay, so that's a stunt, I believe. Um, so you don't need to fend a, uh, spend a fate point to engage a stunt. Oh, pardon me, not fate. I need to spend all my cyber hearts. Um, but here's the thing. You already used one charge to get one drone in the air at the bar. That's right, I did. Mm -hmm. So you only we have... Didn't. What's your refresh rate on that? It's, it's, re it's rest, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So you don't actually have the energy at present to launch all your drones in that stunt formation. But you have enough charges for two more drones. All right. Um, she will forego SNPs. Uh, they, are, they are my heavy, chunky power user. They should definitely stay out. And then she launches... So Jacob's probably got two on his shoulder, so she'll send out one and three as well. Okay. SNPs is five. Um, okay, you just keep track of that. <laughs> uh, let me. They will all which which names as they get upgraded. Which which one is um uh, weapons capable or are they all just surveillance? only 
only sniffs his like true weapons. The other ones have like a small taser. That's it. Okay. Um Surveillance only until you can craft upgrade them in the world. Perfect. Yeah. Um I don't nope, mi- totally agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I agree. Um, okay, so you've got three surveillance drones, uh, one on uh, one on Jacob's shoulder right now, two that have just been launched from the car park. Anywhere in particular that you're looking to send those? or One is heading to the front main entrance to find itself perching like inside a lamp. Convention center main entrance or main entrance to this back area? Convention center main entrance first. Okay. And then she... Probably for safety's sake, she should stay in the limo, and then she will send one to the back door as well. Okay. Um, all right. So, reminder, the parking lot's now a blind spot to everybody. Like, your HUD is not updating well, that area. Well, actually, the... Okay, so... If we go to the convention center back door, there's going to be, like, a block of trees that sort of, like, are sort of between the storage area and the office and the workshop um, from the back door. So you can definitely see the road in. You can definitely see them coming up and uh, the other direction. You definitely can see over into the parking lot where you guys are. And you can even sort of see down to the the two uh, the two story shop area. Um, but there are trees directly between that back door and say the office storage building block. Okay, so kind of between yeah. the two story shop and the workshop. That's yeah. The so I mean, if you send them, if you send them up, if you get elevation, then you're good. Just gotta you gotta get them over the trees. There is always the risk of elevation of being spotted easier though. So mm-hmm. drones' default is find a slightly concealed area unless described otherwise. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go into that. Everybody else, what do you do? Except for Jacob. We know what Jacob's doing. First off, do we know where Flash Thompson is? Well, now we do. If we got the update right. from Karina. Or, sorry. All right. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll say Dalton's primary mode is, um, wait by the car. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, uh, cool. <laughs> Uh, you can hang out in the parking lot. Um, there's, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, as you're standing, leaning on the uh, the 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 limo, um, Jacob sort of comes around the corner of the two story buildings, like literally with an ice cream cone, and you know, I mean, fat, balding, forty age, middle aged man, like he, you're looking at, the, like Karen is now jealous of the ice cream cone. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Like you, oh, yeah, fuck. yeah. You're you're like you caught sight of an ice cream cone, and you're like motherfucker, right? But you, <laughs> but you do know Dalton that there's an ice cream shop open somewhere over there. Just FYI. Oh, sweet fucking Christ. Um, that's definitely a thing you're aware of. Um, Karen, what are you up to? Uh, I think I would. Go take a peek at those offices. They they probably look kind of like office mm-hmm. more than storage. So I yeah, it's it's literally yeah. just a, like it it's it's a giant it's a big ass building where there's that like wall and a stupid like fake ceiling that they put in in the office to like in the the storage area. So there's like you know a little just some uh, some desks and like a water cooler and a microwave in the corner and shit like that. It's but just one of those spaces. That okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely like you open the the side door once you're in the office, and that's just the that's the uh, the storage area warehouse sort of thing. Um, but yeah. Um, I will remind you all. I, I'm. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. I'm not gonna say shit. Just gonna right. GM myself there for a second and reel right. that back in. Um, Patty, what are you up to? Um, two kind of main focuses is from where we are, how well we can see what we're trying to keep an eye on. And then two, like number of cops around, you know, just scoping. 
they're um, on the main drag that you came in, like came in off of when you turned into this back area. Um, you do see like, you know, semi regular patrol cars going by. Um, and um, where are you? You're in the parking lot. I'll yeah, tell you what. I'm kind of like close to the car because Krill. All right. Give me, give me a roll. Self. I'll give you a roll on this. We'll see. Right. We'll see what's up. Um, I got a two. Okay. And then you have neither that nor that. Um, you, you, you clocked on the way in, um, the, the, the single patrol car going up the road. Um, and you clock across the way, like walk, just sort of disappearing out, out through the trees towards the, the boardwalk, um, towards the far end of the park, you sort of clock that, like, I think I saw maybe a security guard or something going that way. Um, the, <clears throat> so yeah, there's, there's some, but there doesn't seem to be a very high presence of security in this area. All right. All right. So that's kind of the cops and storage space is. From where we are in the car, can I just have a clear view of uh -huh. the storage? Spot? Yeah, of the back of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So I just talk in the headspace. I'm like, so if we can keep eyes on the back side, we may need to keep eyes on the front side too. I mean, I'm in the office. I'm. Are you yeah, are, are you gonna there. are you gonna go into the office? Oh, oh, okay. I, it, it, was there anybody in there when I opened up the door? Uh, you you're telling me you want to walk up to the office and open the door? Oh, I thought I had already done that. Or, or, oh, I could see that it's that kind of thing straight from the outside. That was what you were saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Karen mode almost hits for a second. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So Wild. where where are you, Karen? You're you're out front of the. <laughs> like, are you standing directly in front of the building? Or are you just wandering on the parking lot? Okay, you're standing in directly in front of the building, like by the offices, sort of. Uh yeah, yeah, like over right next to the office and like by the trees there. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. maybe take a peek around, see if there's anything around the corner. Give me um yeah. give me two different roles. Nada. Okay. Okay. Minus two. So I'll tell you right now, let's see, Karen, nothing on there and nothing on there. Okay. So you don't notice anything is especially weird going on here. But I'll tell you this right now, if you're trying to remain, like, you know, sort of incognito, she's not at all. <laughs> this is this is a high-end looking woman in a very, like, high-end uh, uh, dress and a designer belt and high heels and a purse. And <laughs> she stands, this is, a, like, a work area. This is, like, a place that... You know, we keep the tools and the shelves and the shit that we help build in the convention center from. Like, this is legitimately, like, sort of a, a blue-collar backstage area that happens to be adjacent to some, like, stupid rich tourist bullshit, right? So, definitely standing out. Don't see anything right now. Um, and um, so, Krill's doing that. Dalton's doing that. Troy. My man, Troy. What's Troy up to? Um, well, Troy's still operating off of the last order for this place. Let's just make sure no one's going inside who doesn't need to go inside. So he's mostly just kind of wandering around, staring at the door. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, back door, front door? Um, 
where did we park again? Did we park? You parked out back. back. You parked out back. Okay. So the back door then. Okay. So as you guys are beginning to get like set up and get to your positions, right? You're sort of, you're clocking various things and the, you, you're looking at your, your, your timepieces, your watches, your comms devices. And you remember that, you know, you're on the clock um, in one minute, but you're not on the clock yet. And as you, uh, as you realize that it's one minute till go time, you hear a, a, a light, uh, light air vehicle. You hear the, the hum and the whoosh of the turbines forcing air down. And this vehicle lands right in the front parking lot of the office and storage area. Now, so you are back. You have that, but you're in uh you're in a blind spot. Um, you're in a blind. Uh-huh. Where is Jacob? Well, you said he ran, he ran on the corner. So yeah, he's kind of be looking towards the parking lot at this moment. Just kind of leaning. Okay. Against like just one of the walls. Then yeah, you guys hear a, the the whoosh and the rush of the turbines from an LAV, and it lands, and. As you, as it lands, uh, forgive me, I have, I have extensive on this, um, Fun. so, forgive me for working not from memory, um, okay, so, Karen, our eyes for this situation, I guess, um, with one minute before... <clears throat> You're actually on the clock before you're pay- getting paid to do something, Karen. What you see is the uh, tail end of that LAV fucking... Tsh- and out walks a group of people. Out first... Wa- um, am I orders correct? There we go. <laughs> out walks um, six people followed by four people. And you immediately, Karen, recognize that these are, I don't know who these people are up front, but given, um, based on some of their hardware, some of the gear, some of their, how they carry themselves, you at least clock a couple of probably former runners, maybe fit current fixers, but you definitely know the four people that are, uh, that are flanking and behind them are for sure bodyguards. Because these motherfuckers start walking out and you immediately clock them. Just a big old fucking mecked out dude. Just an absolute tank of a machine. And a dude who's got the visors on and the skinny suits for, uh, for wet wear dives. Definitely somebody brought a net runner. For sure somebody brought a net runner to the party. And out walks. It's... it's is that, is she female? I mean, at what point does the metal become like a gender? All you know is that if you probably had to describe this person to somebody, the words steel goddess float through your head. <laughs> Don't like Karina's here. Out the fourth one that flanks. Surprisingly human surprisingly fit surprisingly petite but you notice you realize given the company that this person is keeping given the position in which this person is walking probably not someone to be fucked with despite their appearance or size now, Karen, give me your role. Minus three. Oh, well, then I don't need to do anything. You only see these uh, four flanking the, uh, the six that have just walked out in front of you. There's... Definitely a variety of sorts. There seems to be maybe some bruisers, maybe some 
femme fatale types, maybe uh, a net runner or two that's being guarded. But what you definitely do clock is that one of the people being guarded is wearing a all black tracksuit with three stripes down the side. These people, these people continue to walk towards the um, the facility. The storage, um, the building to the storage, actually, it's one of its main doors, the sliding garage doors that they use to move large implements in and out, slides open. They all walk in through the door. It closes behind them. Give me another roll, Karen. Minus one. Okay. The clock ticks. All of you see the time has shuffled. You're on the clock officially. So whatever your so whatever your purpose for being here today, it has officially begun. You have your orders. We'll see what happens. What do you guys do? Remind me real quick. What we were basically told was. <clears throat> Don't let anyone in, don't let anyone out, right? Nope. No. Nope. That's not Shit. what they said. Don't, um, don't. We mm. were told no one comes in the building without someone inside's permission. We keep it quiet. Don't let the meeting be disrupted. And we got, we got just over an hour, right? Yep. Yep. Assuming, we, assuming the minute didn't start right before those fucks walked through the door and we should have been acting... Yeah, like, did, did they? They went in and then we hit it. We oh, don't okay. know. The person who perceived them didn't roll high enough to check the clock in a timely fashion. So we don't actually know if we were on the clock when they were outside or when they were inside. Oh, God help me. Um. Okay, so a minute has passed. Has anybody walked? Has anybody moved? Has anybody shuffled? I need to know locations for people. Uh, the Dalton has moved closer from leaning on the hood of the car. He's moved closer to the handle of the front door. Okay. Seriously considering with the hour he has to go grab an ice cream. Okay. Duly noted. <laughs> Duly noted. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, uh, Karen goes and positions herself over near the door where all of those people came in. <laughs> it's just waiting. Give me all a... right. So... Did we see what, so I like, I'm talking in the columns. Did we see what happened on the front side? I saw that LAC went down, RV, whatever it is. That wasn't near the front door, was it? Because we, no, that wasn't. Yeah, it was. You said no. it was in a blind spot. Yeah, it, it was. was a, it's it in was your blind side. spot. Oh, we my blind it. spot. Yeah. We basically saw it come down, and then it just went where we couldn't see how, it. How yeah, close, so got close door, is the back door, and ja- got Front door, back door, and Jacob. Which which car are you looking for, Aspen? Uh, uh, our car. How close is uh, it? It's, it's on the other side of the building. Oh. oh. Yeah, okay. and I would have I would have pulled it right up to the like uh, like well sideways, but right up to the um, sidewalk at the end of the driveway, closest to the door. Okay. All right. So I want to position Patty to where she's kind of like giving the angle vision of where she can partially see the front or maybe see Karen and then see the backside? Um, you would have to walk across the street and post up by the back door of the convention center probably to get to that view. That's she can, fine. Okay. Um, anybody else? Positions? Yeah, drones are going to do some adjusting. Okay. Uh, the one on Jacob's shoulder is going to take to the aerial, and it's actually going to sit on top of the office building. Uh, hopefully, with that height, it doesn't get seen too easily, but it is going to try and give a scan from above the office building so that that little patch behind it isn't so hidden from us and um, we can see into the uh, parking spot a bit better. 
Jacob. Give me your roll. Um, when the drone takes off, it gives you a little like wiggle and a little beep <laughs> that even, even, even in the hearts of a hardened gangbanger, it was cute. It was cute. They've got two little tiny manipulators in front of them that will sometimes like do little. It, it yeah. gave you a little wave and then a little doo -doo -doo, and it, it zoomed off. Right. It, it was, it was cute. There's no way around that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so Jacob, where are you? Saying that Dalton was decided to start walking over towards the shops. <laughs> he just decided, you know what, fuck it. Let's just make a pass at him and see what's going on with the rest of the group. Just start walking towards him back, you know. Not running, just walking over towards him. Okay. Um, where he's over there. Uh where's Troy? What's Troy doing? Uh, Troy has now moved to stand beside the door. <clears throat> Which door? The back door. Okay, to the to the storage area. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right, then I need to do this, and I need my... <laughs> all right. Um... <laughs> Patty. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Give me a roll. All right. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. I got a nice one. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm scared. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. All's quiet so far you can see from your position that dalton seems to be sidling his way towards jacob you don't okay. you don't really know he's after an ice cream cone you just see right. he's headed towards the two-story buildings um sort of like in an intercept path he's he's headed that way and jacob's sort of coming around and like has started to yeah. curve into an intercept pass like oh jesus all right i'm like Everything all right, Dalton? Uh, yeah, I'm. I mean, we we've got like an hour. I can take three minutes to go get an ice cream cone, right? Like you guys got this. I'm really just can, the car guy. Can you just wait by the car, please? I'll give you a second set of Viagra if you stay by the <laughs> car for the whole hour. <laughs> I, I look. How how close is Jacob to me now? Oh, you guys are. Okay, I I, I look up at Jacob. That's a pretty good deal, to be honest. Yeah, you know, dude, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Before you get going though, I was in, while I was getting this ice cream right here. I noticed there were some some suits talking about how that place is fucking swarming with feds right now. They're saying that there's like a lot of there's like a lot of high profile people in there. You should probably, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't get that ice cream, but probably should be ready to jet in case anything goes down. Yeah. Okay. I I I can be professional. I just I I really thought this was easy, but if, if you feel like if you feel like there's really some police force or presence here, I mean, it's yeah, fine I'll, I'll I'll wait by the car. It's fine. I'm just saying, like they're right in there. <laughs> if anything goes down, we 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 gotta we gotta run from all sides. All right, all right. All right. I'll 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 ease off the ice cream. And I I say that to Patty as well. I'll buy you a second one after this. <laughs> hey, I'm walking away with two more Viagra's and ice cream cone. It's a good day for for old Dalton. Yeah. Um, Although you you can tell he's real dejected about not getting an ice cream cone. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. You're by the back door. You're by the back door. Patty, Patty, mm -hmm. um, you're yep. post you're posted up by the back door of the convention center, right? You got yep. sort of a you've got a sort of a left and a right, 
right? You can yeah. see right down the road. You can see where you came in. You can see down to the bay over there. You can see forward into the parking lot. Yeah. Right. Sunglasses on. Nobody no really knows. Give me, fully give where me, I'm give me a roll. All right. Average. Around the corner comes uh, uh, comes a dude who is absolutely having the time of his life. If you had to guess, he's probably a vendor here at the convention center. He is out of town having the time of his life. This dude's probably on some like designer street drugs that the NSF produces, maybe some liquor. Who the fuck knows? But this dude's doing the convention circuit, circuit right? He's checked the fuck out. This dude comes around the corner yelling his head off. Whoa! Ah, I fucking love this city! He starts turning that corner, sees you, and starts heading right for you. Oh, my, no. my man, what is up? Are you here to party too? Shit, are we doing a deal? What? I mean. What do you yeah. mean? What do you mean? What? You you want to get you want to get fucking buzzed, my man? Come on, come on, do a line with me. Do a line with me. This dude is you know this dude is fifteen decibels louder me. than he should be at a party. How about you do two lines for me? Fuck yeah! Woo! And he fucking w runs up and just like on the ground in front of you starts fucking crushing up a line on the cement and just <laughs> hovers up that first line. Fucking looks up at you and says, "You gotta get in on this, man!" Woo! You're killing it on your own, man. I I would hate to take your spotlight. You know, you can't blame him. He's on that 60% cocaine, 40% gravel <laughs> shit. The, you know, it's pretty intense. The, the, the second woo has brought the attention of a security guard who has just come down the street and turned the corner. And now he's okay. looking at him and you. And I, I, quit, I say a quick, I got a fucking druggy or some shit just up here. Security guard's probably going to give me some shit, so, you know. And I don't move immediately. I'm just kind of standing there. Okay, so security guard clocks the two of you, starts walking towards you with that sort of, <clears throat> you know, little puff out that they do, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> Good evening. Having a bit of a party out back, are we? Yeah, this guy came around the corner. Oh, you you two aren't together? Nah, nah. Uh, med tech. Give a roll. All right. Oh shit! And I kind of like like open up the jacket just a little bit to kind of indicate the armor. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, help me. Oh, shit. <laughs> when you open the jacket to, to sort of show the armor, it shows the breastplate where you've, like, removed oh. the med tack. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So, while this is happening... Troy. Uh oh. Puppers! There's a puppy. There's a puppers at your feet and it wants to play. Uh Troy just kind of looks at it. It it's absolutely pawing at your leg. It's pawing at your leg. It starts to yip and whine. Just yip. <laughs> Um, he just continues to look at it. It, it. it just doesn't really, cuteness doesn't really register with him. Okay. Um, give me a roll. All right. I failed. The dog looks at you. It stops to whimper. It stops yipping. It stops pawing. It looks at you, 
it seemingly looks you up and down and then walks away. Oh. I just piss on him. The dog continues off towards the park. Oh, poor doggy. Troy just goes back to monitoring the door. When the dog bomb, when the dog vibe checks you and it doesn't come out great. Yeah. <laughs> Karina, or Krill, I should say. What kind of coverage with those drones you have? 360 degrees. Where are they? Washroom break. Okay, so back. one is above the office building right now. One is at the convention's back door. One is at the convention's front door. <laughs> and one is on my back and one is on my head as well. Those two are unused. The right one now. at the t front door gives you an alert of all alerts. Um, incoming, incoming, incoming. Uh, can I make a roll for it, for that drone to attempt a diagnostic check and send me the info mm -hmm. so I know if this absolutely is, you like can. if this target is armed? Yep, absolutely you can. <sighs> Minus one. I don't know what that is rolling on, but um, it would either be uh, you know what, plus two. Um, yeah, you know what? They're not, it's not stealthy. Um, do these drones have audio as well? Yes, they can, re they're able to completely record into intake audio. They cool. just can't produce any sounds outside of. You have, and you have a drone covering the front of the convention center. I absolutely do. It okay. is currently inside. You know how like outdoor buildings have those like, d like cylinder lampshades. I imagine it's like inside one of them comes down and scans and like it's doing it your drone thing. sees a group of clearly mucky mucks of some sort right but obviously there's like a corporate pitchman here as well and they are paying attention to the road and the skyline out front of the convention center and as this alert goes off what you hear is off in the distance and anybody who is outside um, and paying a lick of attention would hear this sound a whining a whir a high-end turbine or wait not a turbine turbines three of them light attack vehicle drones Incoming. Ah. Give me a roll on your drone out front, Karina. Um, even with, yes, even with that, um, there's three incoming LAV drones in a bombing formation run. They are coming straight at the convention center. All right. Uh, the immediate... So, like, Krill, not used to this circumstance, doesn't have, like, some keyword she's just going to tell the party. Suddenly, everyone's earpiece is blasting with the most inorganic, robotic, like, firing up old internet dial-up kind of noise. Just, <laughs> like, burning through your ears as suddenly... All, like, anyone's got a HUD on their phone or something, it's flashing. She's just trying to get your fucking attention right now. She has no idea how to do it. She's just like, look here, motherfuckers. And even at this point, she's leaning out the limo door like... Me! Move! What? What's going on? And she's just th pointing at the front door. At the convention. Well, for you to point at the front door, you're basically just pointing at the building because the front door is on the other Fair side. Fair enough. Yeah, you're yeah. just pointing at the convention center. Basically. Front, front door. I'm like, I, point, I I look to the security guard. There's something weird going on there, dude. I you hear that. Give me a roll. Oh, God. Please, 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 please. 
<laughs> poor. Doesn't My matter. He, he rolled very poorly. Um, so, security guard looks at you, looks at the guy, and goes, you got this, right? Yep, I got it. All right. And he just, and he starts sprinting off. All right, cool. As, as soon as, like, he gets out of immediate eyesight, I'm like, I drag this guy a little bit away from the convention center, and I'm like, hey, bud, uh, go sn- sm- snort your lines, like, at the park. Go there. Okay. Aaron and- looks up and, and goes, I'm not getting paid for that. I'm getting paid to watch this door. <laughs> And goes back to what she was doing. Fair enough. <laughs> the the stoned guy takes your advice and starts like walking towards through like towards the parking lot towards the park and sees Jacob's ice cream cone and just mumbles to himself as he stumbles off ice 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 cream. Ice cream's good. I want ice cream. Ice cream's good. Ice cream. Ice cream's good. Ice cream. And he just starts walking towards the promenade, towards towards the boardwalk, right? Where the shops are, and literally just walks off the pier. What the fuck? <laughs> well, uh, if he drowns because he's that high, do, it's on him at that point. Do I see that? Yeah, you absolutely do. You hear the splash. All right, All right cool. How do I feel about that? I don't know. How do you feel about that, Patty? That is, that is you. I'm putting it in the backpack. Okay. Um, yep. of, officially, uh, any mental stress, so I'll just nullify that. Any mental stress is in the uh, is to be dealt with at the end of scene. So Patty just knowingly lets someone die, potentially, and <laughs> encouraged the drug use, told him to fuck off, Okay. And then walk in. I don't care about the drug use. Drug use doesn't bother me. I, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you the the <laughs> mental matter. load that Patty has to deal with. Encouraged the drug use. Told him to fuck off. And then he ended up in the bay. I was trying to help him. It so, is a factor here. So, Can't separate the drug use from the accident. Yep. I just I just need you to know that. I just need you to know that. Yeah. So, why, all do right. you, why do you do this to me, Kai? Put it in the backpack. Welcome to, welcome to Kai GM. <laughs> yep. As, uh, let's just say I'm a fan of ethical complications. And qu- <laughs> yeah. um, so, put it in the backpack activated. You'll deal with that later. Or, yep. shall we say, the group will have to deal with that later. Um, so, that's fine. Um, now, Karina, you're freaking the fuck out. You're like legit, like this is your first job. And there's like a security convention full of fucking feds and shit right next door. And there's a attack run happening from three in formation LAV drones headed like in path your direction. What do you do? Um, Her initial instinct is because she knows her current setup. The drone that's above the office suddenly loses all characteristic of having personality and just beelines back for the torso. Okay. Like, it has no concept of anything else. It is getting back to her. Okay. And the moment she feels that capacity freed, she's taking off her hat. Okay. And putting it on the ground and letting snips deploy. And it's like... Only... Only when... Shit hits the fan. Do the cannons come out? Okay, snips. Okay. Do you just hear this? Um. What is what is sort of um? Are you doing anything else? That's basically okay. So snips is deployed by you. For the next area, snips is a non line of sight artillery. Like shoots up and over. Okay. So, all right, I see what you're planning to do. Um, Troy, you can hear this as well. These are, these are clearly, like, you've, you've gotten word over comms, right? There's LAV drones. Don't the dial-up noise. Yep, they're LAV drones inbound, 
You can you have surveillance capability. You can see what her uh, what Krill's drones see. Uh, what what are your actions? Well, he does break away from the door now to go. I guess walk towards the group. Um, he's not entirely sure what exactly to do or what he can do. He's just a robot. He doesn't even have a weapon of any kind. Uh, so I guess he walks up to Krill. Okay. Um, and asks, is Kr- there anything I can do? Is there any way I can be assistance? Krill has fallen out of the, the, the vehicle and has rolled underneath it and you can't see them. Now, um, oh. <laughs> uh, we will put a pin in that. Dalton, you're muted. You're by muted, the way. AJ. AJ, you're muted. There yeah, we go. okay. I was just, I was just uh, stuttering. Um, as Troy walks past the car, I think um, Dalton and Jacob are like smoking a joint together, and Dalton just <laughs> looks at Jacob. Hey, did did that thing just pull a crab off its head? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure, dude. <laughs> I, oh, shit. And then what he just the fuck? looks over and sees them fucking... Uh, What's it called? Sees the LAV starting to roll up, and it's just like, oh shit. Um, just without, just without thinking, just one of them as some juice slowly start coming up out of his pants. Nice. Right. Like so, so, Krill, Troy has asked you for guidance. There are physical humans directing drones on the ground near the front door. I, do you have any firearms or anything? Negative. Please use your... Like, she kind of, like, gestures to his arms. Please use your greater capability to subdue some of those humans that are commanding the drones. And then you you feel one of... You feel, like, a set of the humans in the 3D, like, map ping for you. I'm going to need you to roll, Karina. Nice. She's stressed. She could completely fuck up and ping the wrong person. She could have pinged the wrong person. And oh, then, shit. then I'm gonna need you to roll again. Oh my god! Uh, if I get pinged and Troy just hugs me to death, <laughs> <laughs> average. So your drones carry the same notice capability as you as a base character your notice is derived from those drones you just rolled a plus four basically what i will what i will tell you is what the information being communicated back by that front drone is that there is no signal directing these drones. So, like, Krill actually stops, and she's like, normally, there's humans directing drones. Troy, are you capable of, and she's thinking about the consideration, um, indirect uh, inline hacking? If I have access to the device, yes. Are you able to net run? I forget. Did we establish that? Okay, yes. You could be more helpful than anybody else here right now. Elaborate. Can you get a peer-to-peer connection with those drones? Can I? You can try. Uh, what do I roll? Just roll. All right. Right, just like I can. Wow, okay, I got a fair. Just one. Just well, yeah, just, one. like, just body shuts down as net running is, like, a very, like, from what you understand. Like, it's you, it's a full, catches it's, the brain. It's a full dive sort of thing. Yeah. You, yeah. you were you were facing a plus four. You got a, Hello? Plus, you got a plus five. Ooh. Damn. Hey. So, as you reach out, 
as you go to connect to the various devices in the general area and the expanded area around you, all sorts of things begin to ping in a three-dimensional map in your brain. You can, you can communicate and see all of the net-connected devices. You can see the streetlights and the watering drones and the, you know what, give me a roll too while I'm doing this. Uh, the watering drones and all of the infrastructure for the building and all of the communications. Um, okay. Um, all of the communications for the building and all of the subnets. And you can, you can hear the satellite above you in geospatial orbit. You realize in this moment that when you're connected to the net this way, you feel godly and you as a robot don't even know what godly feels like you feel all encompassing ever expansive everywhere and nowhere at once he's in his element you reach out as if with your own hand you reach towards the drones in the air and instantly they you connect and they respond what do you say to the drones? Please define your current directive. Demonstration run. Convention Center. New San Francisco. Elaborate demonstration run. Demonstration for the purposes of sales. Is this an aggressive act? Contrary. Are your weapons loaded and ready? Loaded, not readied. Do you intend to attack the building? No. Inquiry ended. Disconnecting. With that, the drones come in fast and hot they plunge down at a rate of acceleration that far exceeds terminal velocity zooming right in to that crowd in the front and you krill you troy can see through that drone you can see in high definition crystal clear three-dimensional image and audio as those drones come straight barreling in and stop inches in front of the crowd <laughs> Even Krill's like... <laughs> the salesperson is laughing, is bellowing a laugh. You see? Normally they don't stop, but, you know, I need your money first. Krill's making a note. Do demonstrations normally set off danger alarms in most drones? Because, as far as she knows, she, her drones aren't the only ones in the area. This fucker could have just set off a streetwide, like, every automatic system is now in fight-or-flight mode. Who knows? Worth looking into, though, isn't it? So she, she definitely makes that mental note. As this is happening... Oh, okay. I kept that back door. Jacob. What are you doing with all of this commotion, with all of this racket on the comms, with the joint and the ice cream, with the druggie who's just taking a walk off the pier? <laughs> what, what's Jacob up to? At this point, seeing that the LAV just managed to, the, or the drone rather, just <clears throat> managed to just stop right in front of the crowd, kind of just in the periphery heard the laughter and it was just like, just starts to reholster the SMG. Takes a bit of a deep breath and just thinks to himself, just like, oh, we're in over our fucking heads. This, we don't, we don't have the logistics for this. Eventually, he looks over at Dalton and says, hey, look, I'm going to I'm gonna listen in and see what's going on with, the, with the, the, that sales guy, all right? If I can keep the J, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be go seeing what's up. 
Where's yeah, Jacob I headed? Play in the car. <laughs> Dra- okay, so you're in the car. Like you're gonna head back well, to the car and get yeah, in. Yeah, as soon as you know, okay. we're done, I'm I'm getting into the front seat okay. to like sit there and just shake. What direction is Jacob headed? Um, you said that they were by the. They oh, were heading towards the office, right? The uh, sales. Who? Oh no no no! They're they're in the front of the convention center. They're literally blocks away in the front of the convention center. They're on the other side of the building from you. The only mm. reason that you were able to observe them is Krill's gear. I think I'm just gonna make the dart for the trees by the office that are so that it's for that little okay. bit of just cover. Okay. Um, you going for any stealth, or is Karen down there gonna hear you coming? Stealth. We're going stealth here. Give me a roll. Oh, and Karen, I need a roll from you. Okay. Zero. Yep. Um, okay, zero. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, Karen, you don't notice this. Despite moving at probably a little quicker pace than most humans move at normally, you firmly and very quickly find yourself amongst those trees around the corner from the front of the office. Um, and yeah, you can totally like see Karen hanging out in front of that building. Karen, on the other hand, doesn't see you. Right. Um, eventually oh go ahead no go ahead i was gonna say eventually kind of just like with a little bit of mental preparation he decides you know fuck it it probably would be good to give karen at least a notification that he was going to be surveilling nearby so rather than calling to her physically he just goes to the comms and just kind of whispers like hey you got any eyes on that on that sales on that sales rep that decided to pull that stunt you know where you know where I think uh you know where he's at? The sales rep? Mm. Never, I mind. No idea. Yeah, Never mind. I Don't saw people that. walking in to here and this is where our job was, so that's why I'm still here. Mm. Saw those people. Alright. Um oh yeah, that reminds me. If my pen continues to write, hang on, there we go. Um, okay, um, okay. so you're there, you're there. Um, Dalton, have you made it back to the car? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Back Are you in sitting in the driver's seat? Sitting in the driver's seat. Relaxing. <clears throat> cool. Trying to relax. All right, give me a, give me a roll. Mediocre. You're sitting there, basically just sort of looking forward out of the car, right? You uh, you glance left, you know, at the driver's side. When you come back to center with your vision, you immediately catch something. And you look to the passenger seat, and there is a short, curly-haired, scraggly, Sort of, I mean, vaguely gnomish looking man. And he looks right at you with the biggest smile and says, Hey there, my name's Jared Donald, but everybody calls me Bruno. What you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> Dalton looks back forward. I love him. Has a, has a sudden realization that he should have asked for some kind of antipsychotic instead of Viagra. <laughs> looks back hi i'm dalton hi dalton what, my name's giordano you? everybody calls me bruno bruno okay no bruno, do you know what no is? dalton my name's giordano but everybody calls me bruno Giordano. dalton oh no is this what i think it is Voice. I'm not gonna say anything. 
I'm so confused. <laughs> When you look up, True. when you when you're when Dalton looks down trying to figure this out, and you look back up, there's no one sitting in your passenger seat. Jeez. Pro Dal Dalton processes it for a few minutes, then uh, on the communicator. Hey, hey Pat, Pat, Patty. Yeah. Uh, at some point, we're, we're going to need to talk about what a stroke looks and feels like. Okay. Um, hold up both of your hands. Do either one of them feel heavy? No. Okay. Um, touch uh, the left side and the right side of your face if one of them is drooping. No, we're good. Okay. Just, you should be fine, but if if you feel weird, just hold up your hands, check your face, and then if anything changes, just keep me updated. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I'll be here. <laughs> Sud suddenly realizing that it's not a good combination to have hallucinations and drive. Dalton is now in, a, in an ever-spiraling... <laughs> thought bubble of like what was that can i even drive what is the road what is okay. all of it so i'm gonna place a temporary aspect on you the same way that mm -hmm. we would take a place a temporary aspect on anything like my classic example of oil drums in a warehouse spilled now there's an oily floor aspect uh dalton has for the purposes of the rest of the uh encounter and possibly the rest of the session, the aspect of existential crisis. Now, you guys can invoke existential crisis for a fate point. Just know that. You guys can cross-compel each other's characters. Dalton is firmly having an existential crisis of sorts. Aspect is temporarily on character. You may or may not get that sorted. Now, as we do this, um, <clears throat> Patty... All right. Oh, God. Uh, Give me a roll. Oh, no. All right. It's rolling. Plus one. All right. There is, um, for sure, a Fed standing on the corner trying not to get spotted. All right, I just give a heads up on their location. Hey, got a fed. He's on the corner. He's trying to blend in, quote unquote. Yeah, he's by the main road. Main road. He's just walking around, you know, desperately trying to blend in with his standard issue shoes, trench coat, and buzz cut. <laughs> if you plan on smoking anything, don't do it right now. So he's he's just taking a cruise. He's you know sort of walking down the sidewalk, trying to look inconspicuous, um, as they always do. I'm I'm sitting like at the roughly the same area I was before I moved for a minute to kind of you know just keep that yeah. diagonal vision. Cool. Yeah, he's definitely like pretending to be on his comms, and you know scrolling some fake feed of some sort. Yeah. But definitely keeps, you know, doing this yep. sort of shit. Yep. Um, yep. All right. Um, <clears throat> Jacob. A woman approaches you. She sidles up to you and goes, excuse me, I, I need some help. Uh, what type of help do you need? Well, you you look like the kind of young lad who um, probably knows his way around these parts. Um, and I just I just have a, a couple of questions, possibly, if you could answer them for me. I don't see the harm. What's up? Well, I just, you know, I've been curious lately as to the nature of the, the, the city and with this security convention in town, I mean, 
are there really like that? Is there really that much criminal undercurrent to the city? Like, are there a lot of criminal elements here? I mean, people tend to exaggerate it, in my opinion. You know, as long as you know where to stay, you keep your respect about you, you can stay out of trouble for the most part. Well, I understand but, staying out of trouble, but is there trouble to be found? I feel like there's trouble everywhere, everywhere you look. Hmm. Give me a roll. God damn. No. <laughs> Look. A criminal would say there's crime. Look. <laughs> how about how about I make things uh how shall we say uh, easier for the two of us? I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you. Um my name's Ward Wood. I'm a reporter. I'm I'm trying to get my big story, and this news, this this security convention has got to have something, right? Federal corruption, gang involvement, something. Look, I don't need you to go on the record, but I've got five thousand credits to spend on this story, and I just need names and something. I need something sketchy. You give me something, I'll give you the five thousand credits, and we never have to talk again. Or I give you my number and maybe we have some business with each other. What's up, Karina? Inflation question. Isn't that like 50 bucks? 5,000 creds? Uh, yeah. 5,000 creds will get you basically uh, a new cyber arm or a couple of real stakes, like actual, actual stakes. Okay, okay, so no, 5,000 is closer to more like... A couple hundred. One, one K? Well, we're talking like, keep in mind, meat isn't common here, so real steaks actually are expensive in this world, so that probably wasn't the best example, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, I didn't say real trademark steaks. I said real steaks. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. Um, okay, yeah, no, that kind of makes sense. Keep in mind, right, no. you're being paid 2,500 for this just keep people out of this building gig. Mm -hmm. That's like three, four K us money. So, well, uh, that, no one said it would be us. The fucking speaking of which, Jacob just kind of will glance around, and then eventually just takes out the earpiece, <laughs> takes a little deep breath, and just puts on a nice little cheesy grin. And it's like, all right, look, just for you. Like I said, this doesn't go on the record, and... Nope, totally off the record. All right. Just between you and me, from what I could hear from a couple suits, a little over there in that little shop, don't worry. All I know is that, from what I can gather, is that, like, all of the top players in this industry are out there, you know, making making some sort of scene, especially with that little stunt that they pulled with those with those drones earlier. I think I, I couldn't tell you any specific names, but I could tell you that there's going to be that, that this 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 story here is going to is going to be what you what you need to make it big. I need I mean, what story? Wait, I need more than that. I mean, I need like five. Give me give me my 5000 credits worth. I think I got a lower roll here. Go for it. All right. Go for it. <laughs> I'll fill right. in blanks for you if you roll right. high enough on lore. All right. God fuck it, damn it. <laughs> Oof. Listen, Karen's the only one who knows who's who's in this fucking city. Let's be honest. Yeah, but no one likes Karen, so no one asked. Right. Dude. Karen, give me a roll, by the way. Anyway, yeah. mark, mark of a good year, but no one likes you. Psychic bitchiness growing. Like, how dare they? Minus one. Okay. Just just need to establish some lore in the back of my head for Karen um, while we're doing this. So, yeah, no. Uh, Ward, totally, she's, you know, standing there in her, like, red cocktail dress and high heels. Absolutely not blending into a worker's area, but, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Come on, give me my 5000 worth. Well, I'm le I'll let you know right now. 
over, you know, in the, in the more, let's say, rundown parts of town, there has been a slight uptick of Nils activity. And I can tell you right now that we're starting to see a bit of a shift in power between the Nils and some of the other gangs. And I think part of what's going on in there in, the, in, the, in, the, in that security convention is going to be related towards that sort of movement. Do with that what you will, you know. She doesn't look happy. Ward, Ward is uh, not truly satisfied. And she, she says, I, mm. give me, I'll give you the 5,000 if you give me your calm ID. And I'll give you mine. And if something goes down, you let me know. You know, I was going to ask you either way, but glad to know that you gave that to me. Okay. Uh, you officially, you can write that down. You have Ward Woods' uh, comms ID. She is a local up-and-coming reporter trying to make a name for herself in this city. Um, and you have 5,000 more creds even though you don't fucking need them. That. <laughs> so, all right. Good to know. Um, I wondered which one of you motherfuckers would cut that deal. Um, okay, so I have, all right, hang on. <laughs> um, okay, so so anyway, what you doing? He's back. He's sitting right next to you, Dalton. No. You blinked. You blinked. You literally blinked your eyes. And in that blank. So what you doing? Pretty sure I'm dying. What are you up to, small imaginary man? My name's Giordano, but everybody calls me Bruno. Are you going to do that until I use your name? I mean, you don't need to use my name. I use my name. Everybody uses my name. My name's Giordano, but everybody calls me Bruno. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Where did you come from, Giordano? Over there. O opening to look, does he indicate anywhere? He's looking right at you. Oh, right in my eyes. Oh, this feels like crap. Is there something you'd like or to know or do? Yeah, or what you doing? Just waiting to drive somewhere? Ah, driving. I like driving. What you driving? What you doing? Why are you driving? Okay. Let's do this. And uh um I don't know makes or models of uh cars, but Feel Dalton free. uh sinks into his special place and answers the question. What am I doing? I'm driving a nine eleven super. What this does is it uh creates an engine uh to, and I don't know anything about cars in real life. So just goes on a tirade talking about like every mechanical piece of a car, everything about Give this car and what it roll. does. Give me a roll. Give me a yeah, roll. He, he, yeah, try, just Give trying to calm himself by talking about what he knows. Are you, while you're doing this, are you looking at him? I'm looking, I'm looking at the hood of my car <laughs> through the like windshield and then like the, the, Mechan like I'm I'm focusing on everything around okay. him. Okay. Um Wow, that sounds exciting. It sounds like you really know what you're doing. Are you like a part are you a part of something? Or are you a part of yourself? Or like who are you? I mean I would argue you're a part of me if this is truly a hallucination. So I'm a part of everyone. The answer. 
Oh my god. It's like it's like when you ask questions, they go right to my soul, but in a bad way. I mean, we're all one, and if, after all, I mean, the universe is a singular entity. I mean, everybody has to know that by now. Mm. Yeah, I failed that class actually back in back in high school. Hey, 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 Dalton, 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 Dalton. Mm. Yeah. When you do that, when you say yeah, he just very suspiciously glances out through your windshield, goes, mm, number five. When you open your eyes, he's gone. So you didn't see what he was doing. You just heard a mm, number five. Poof. Every, every part of Dalton is entirely creeped out and... <laughs> Not even sure what to focus on. Definitely, definitely in that existential spiral. Because give me, give me, can't give me a figure roll. out what would even be causing this in this in in the context of this world. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have biotic like upgrades. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anything like he doesn't get hacked or anything. So this is just I'm I'm slowly dying tonight. All right, give me a roll. Hey, this is a random question. Do y'all remember that um, song from like a couple of years, like 20 years ago? It was like the like the creepy guy who was green who could see the future. What was his name? It would have been two 20 years ago. No, no, this is in game. Oh. You know, it's like we don't talk about something. What is it? Come on. You know what? Come I'm, on. Gonna that answer, I'm gonna keep that answer the same in roleplay. I just don't watch TV. Oh no, what is it? Um there's I'm gonna I'm gonna push you along. Um who is in any way, shape, or form adjacent to the garden? To the park. I mean I guess I could see it from the trees. Okay. No, no, you couldn't. No, you kind of not. No, you're you're over by the office. Oh right, yeah. Fuck. Nope. I'm still smack dab in the middle of the parking lot. I guess I could see half the park, but not the full thing. Okay. I guess since I'm technically next to Karina, I'm also just in the middle of the parking lot. Okay. I don't think I can. Uh, anybody who catches at least a portion of the par uh, of the park, um, you hear the the. The drones are out maintaining the park right now. Watering, trimming, buzzing things, that sort of thing. Um, Detective, uh, uh, the, uh, the Fed, the Fed has definitely started wandering towards you, your guys' direction. He's made his way down that street, that side street, and he's very casually finding his way towards people. He gets closer. I slip my sunglasses back on. He he looks at you and basically decides that like you belong, giving co greater context of everything going on at this facility. He just sort of like once overs you and just it kept walking. Um, but the limousine parked in the uh, the storage parking lot. Definitely, you know, with a few interesting characters coming and going, may have caught his attention. Who, um, you're over there. You're successfully stealthed. You're over there. Ha! Um, you are in clear sight, Karen. Mm hmm Um, he's about, fi he's about 5'11". Sort of stocky build. A um, little bit of a, a graying beard. You can tell it hasn't been shaved today. He's probably been out all day. He's got all the standard issue gear. And he clocks you. He wa starts walking right for you. <laughs> uh, I... Uh kind of been sort of looking at my phone but not really trying to kind of keep an eye on it and see this bit now 
heading right for me. So I put down my phone back into my purse and start calmly going, Pookie, Pookie, oh, oh, hi, hi. What's your name? I, I, I'm looking for my dog. Have you seen my dog around? Um, ma'am, my name is Detective Lieutenant Franks. Oh, a detective. Oh, wow. It's so nice to meet a detective. What is a detective doing out here? Are you going to investigate me? Uh, do you need investigating? Mm, depends what kind of an investigation are you doing. Uh, largely finance, fraud, and arms running. Are you, do you happen to be involved in any of those? No, they don't sound very fun. Oh, well, I'm afraid I'm not much fun, ma'am. I think if you're interested in learning, I have a course that you could sign up for. I mean, we are required to do continuing education credits, uh, uh, you know, on the force. What kind of uh, academic enrollment uh, are you talking about? Uh, this is about how to submit and how to follow orders properly. Oh, well, I'm already a detective lieutenant, ma'am. I've, I pretty much know when to, you know, salute and pull my shorts down. Oh, oh, okay. Good. Uh, you, you don't feel like you'd need any little extracurriculars on the side to ensure that you have more structure and maybe a little bit of whipping, maybe, into uh, shape? Uh, ma'am, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not new to this city. I, I grew up in NSF. I'm, you know, I've been around the block a couple of times. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure I know what you're getting at. And I got to tell you, um, I'm still not, I don't know why I'm telling some random woman on the street. I, I, I'm, I'm still not over the last, uh, she was, oh, she was so great. She was a fiery little redhead and she broke my heart. She just, she, she's left me, she's left me waiting at a cafe and I never got to see her again. It, 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 it broke me. That's terrible to hear. I'm so sorry. I, I, and he sort of shakes himself out of it. Like, what the fuck am I doing? He's like, um, yeah, dog, dog, dog. Um, yes, yes, ma'am. I will get right on that, that dog for you. Thank you. Yeah. She's kind of brownish, orangish, medium size. I think she's been running around. She needed to go potty really badly. I, I, I will, I will for sure keep a lookout, ma'am. I will keep an eye for that. Um, I, yep. I, 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 and he's, he's slowly backing up at this point. He's, he's, as he just trails off and I will, yep. Uh, protect and serve. Ma- I will, uh, hundred percent. I, I keep an eye out for that. And, uh, but yep, 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 uh, yep, yep. And he's just, Thank he's you. fading back that way from whence he came. What'd you do to that guy? Hmm? I didn't do a thing, what? <clears throat> Alright. And over here like, why don't I have that power? Who needs that power, okay? I bring people back from the dead. The power of caring compels you. <laughs> uh, GM. <laughs> yes. So by now we know that those drones were completely not actually a threat at that point? That was a sales demonstration, correct. Yeah, Lucy, Lucy, Jesus, wrong game. <laughs> Krill is like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't leave my drones near the weapons demonstration area, and uh, brings the one from the front door, and crosses over the offices to sit above the storage building. Okay. Um. Anyone who's near Snips, though. Watches the tiny crab adjust its angle every every little bit as the drone moves, because it's blind without like it can see around it, but those drones are really its sight as well. So, right. as you do that, 
just like a cephalopod. Uh, as you do that, you you gain like pretty good cover of the area around, right? Is the drone sitting on top of the building, or is it just hovering above it so we can get a little angle down? If it's sat on top, it'd be blind. So yeah, it, yeah okay. it goes up okay. above. It might lower if it's worried, okay, or like it thinks it's been seen. But fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then give me your roll, Karina. Perfect. Ooh. Um, I'm that. Nice. The drones are out in the park, and one of them is weirdly suspicious. It's behaving incorrectly. Oh. Its programming is not is not right. You you easily can identify a pattern amongst the drones and their behavior and their operation, and one of them is sticking out. Okay. So, different than net running, am I able to do like a targeted link? Like, I know I only want to target this thing. Can mm-hmm. I attempt? To yeah, you've got you've got hacking okay. capability and net connection. All right, I just wasn't sure because like riggers and net runners weren't were mm-hmm. different. All yeah. right, I'm gonna attempt a connection with that. Um, give me a roll. Plus one, but part of me wants to invoke the aspect anyways, just to be sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to spend a fate point. My Your tech likes me better. Okay, so you rolled a plus one. Um, two, four, okay, cool. Um... Do I have a tally on my sheet I need to tick for fate points? Yes, just, just you, you don't, I mean, just, you know, you're down to two for the session. They refresh up to three anyway. Um, <clears throat> the, um, when you connect to the drone, uh, what comes up is a sort of, um, textual interface and ASCII interface of sorts. And then there's a, um, oh shit. Um, the holographic. Ah, okay. Um, there's, um, there's literally like, uh, two letters made out of, um, text and it says P and J and the P's, the P is made out of P's. The J is made out of J and underneath that it says, for the greater collective. Ooh, okay. Like, she keeps a swarm with her. She understands how collectivism can get. She's like, no. Uh, she says this drone to self-destruct. I want to roll from all of you. Oh, no. Krill's head explodes as she marks herself for... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Patty is just humming, a, like trying Plus to figure one. out what the song is while this happens. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna narrate something. Oh no! Oh, no. Fuck. <laughs> What did you do? Karina, what have you done? I I don't fucking know. I saw communism bond and shut it down. (laughs) No, you ordered it to self-destruct. True. Mm. For the the purposes of... Uh, for the purposes of narrative, I'll I'll do the narration, and then for the purposes of so you guys can understand what's going on, I'll explain what's going on afterwards. As you set this drone to, uh, that is out back of the uh, storage in the office area um, that is working on this park to self-destruct, what happens is in an instant, the park no longer exists. The back of the buildings are gone. And anybody who was in within, within this blast radius, feel free to take three physical da- I'm sorry, five physical damage. If you're in vehicles, if you're in cover, or you're protected by walls, feel free to take none. But if you are out back of the building, in any capacity or adjacent to the parking area of the park out back, and are not 
in cover, then you will be taking five damage. So I'm good. I just pre-detonated the terrorist, like, targeted explosive. God damn it. You know what? In the grand scheme of things, probably some good being done there. I will it didn't hit the office, so I will, at least I will tell you right, us should be happy. I, I will tell you for the purposes of exposing the mech, uh, the, the me machine behind it, Caboose, the dog, could have been a tip. AJ, oh, no. it was robot number five. So, there were multiple ways to get here. Also... where I kept asking you whether you wanted to do any legwork or prep work, if any of you had asked a fixer and rolled well, you would have known that what was occurring at that facility was the distribution and dissemination via auction of the fixer's uh, various possessions from the building that was vaporized in your intro. Plans, blackmail, documents, pictures, access codes, government documents, technology, the collection and life's works of a fixer were being sold in that building. So, with that explosion and any damage dealt therein, what will very quickly happen is the front of the door slams open a group of individuals flee the building into the LAV. Some of them flee on foot. Some of them disappear into the, uh, the Bay Area. Two hidden assassins become decloaked, one on top of the building, one standing right next to you, Karen. <laughs> you remember... Yeah, you remember a few of those roles. Oh, no. Detective Lieutenant Franks is a survivor. Um, uh, damn it. So. Did Doc Boy survive? But did Doc Boy survive? The bla no, he didn't survive. The blast, like dead, the blast dead. occurs. The, uh, the, the clients flee. And all of you uh, receive a simultaneous <laughs> message saying you will not be hired back again god damn it no payment i saved a lot i'm kidding i'm not actually arguing that's and, crew's and, mind versus. and like, with with but i saved your life with the crater still smoldering and the camera fading to black that's the end of our session <laughs>